That has been a major success. His Panthers are undefeated, and they've taken no prisoners along the way. Quarterback Alex Van Pelt has executed the orders, and Pitt has soared through the ranks. But the highest-ranking officer in these parts is West Virginia's Major Harris. The major reason why the Mountaineers have reeled off 15 straight regular season wins. In this game, power must be matched with power, and Don Nealon knows the battle in the trenches will be pivotal. This rivalry has always been heated. Tonight, it will be a war. Virginia. ESPN's College Football Saturday continues as tonight it's the number 10 ranked Pitt Panthers taking on the number 9 ranked Mountaineers of West Virginia. Hello everybody I'm Ron Franklin and welcome to another spectacular Saturday evening of ESPN College Football. Couldn't ask for a better matchup. The schools are only 75 miles apart. It's the 82nd meeting, and Kevin, they call it the backyard brawl, but it's the first time they've ever come into the ball game, both ranked in the top 10. And we get a chance to see maybe one of the best or the best overall quarterback in the entire country. Well, Ron, tonight the Panther defense doesn't really have a serious problem, but they do have a major problem. Major Harris, the quarterback for West Virginia. The only team to stop this guy in the last two years was Notre Dame, the defending national champion. They did it last year for the national title in the Fiesta Bowl. West Virginia generates 500 yards a game in total offense. Major Harris is responsible for 271 of those yards. The Panther defense's mission, should they choose to accept it, and I'm sure they have, is to keep the major in the foxhole. If they hold them under 200 yards tonight, Ron, I think they win the game. Well, on the other side of the liner scrimmage, we'll also get a chance to see certainly one of the best freshman quarterback in the nation, Alex Van Pelt for the Panthers. Well, the baby bomber or the Grafton Gipper or whatever you want want to call him the guy has been a phenomenal player so far the Panthers are three and oh he's completing 76 percent of his passes and he's the third rated passer in the NCAA a redshirt freshman Syracuse defense very fine defense made a tactical error last week they did not pressure him they knew it was a mistake West Virginia will not make that mistake they're going to turn their outside back or Ronaldo Turnbull loose on this guy and they'll be after him all night Ron. Kevin we're very pleased to have Chris Fowler on the telecast with us tonight he'll be working the sidelines and in fact he has spent the better part of the afternoon with Mike Gottfried and the Pitt Panthers Chris what kind of flavor do you get from the boys from Pittsburgh well, they seem very quiet, very focused as they began their one-hour bus ride south into enemy territory. Some guys stayed that way all the way down. Alex Van Pelt, for example. Other players loosened up as they got closer to the stadium. Mark Spindler, Pitt's wild man defensive tackle, was up gesturing out the window to the West Virginia fans. Does that mean the Panthers are ready? A little while ago, I asked Mike Godfrey if he thought his young team was ready for battle. I think we are. We've worked hard. The only gauge you really have is practice, and we practiced well this week. We're coming off a very tough game with, uh, with a very good uh, Syracuse football team. we got a tough opponent tonight, but uh, again, it's a great challenge to us. I told him, enjoy it. Let's enjoy it. Let's go play as hard as we can. That's all you can ask. Godfrey told me this is one of the toughest places in the country to play. We'll find out along with him if his young team is up to the challenge in about four minutes, Ron. Okay, thanks so much, Chris. We'll be looking forward to hearing from you tonight. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Pittsburgh versus West Virginia, is brought to you by U.S. Navy. You are tomorrow. You are the Navy. By New York Life, and it's more than 11,000 agents and representatives. And by UPS, fast, efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. Back to Morgantown, the West Virginia student section. They've waited two years for this game. They've been in this stadium for two hours, singing and chanting. 
folks, they just plain hate Pitt. And most of their venom tonight directed at Alex Van Pelt, who grew up in Grafton, 20 miles south of here. We ask him about his homecoming game. I used to go to all the games. I um, always dreamed of playing on Mountaineer Field. I remember, I remember when I was a little kid, I'd walk down on the field, you know, right before the game was over and look up into the crowd and everything. It's, gee, it'd be great to play here. Uh, and I just had all those kid dreams of playing for the Mountaineers and things like that. But, uh, it's worked out. It's worked out fine. I'm happy here, but uh, there's a lot of good feelings going back down there. I have a lot of friends and family to be there. And so. There is Gregory Van Pelt, Alex's father. I'll tell you, if this young quarterback fellas can handle the wrath of this crowd as a freshman, it'll show something about his character. Back upstairs now. Chris, thanks so much. We were already uh, told yesterday by some students that a chant, the minute the pit offense comes on the field, will go Alex, Alex, and they will keep that out. Are that going as long as need be to apply the early pressure? That, that can't be easy, Kim. This is a different type of situation. Last week was national television. Here's a series history. They've been going at it a while. Pitt leads, but of course, West Virginia is one of the programs in this nation that has improved so much over the last six or seven years, certainly since Don Nalen came here nine years ago. Last meeting, you can see it. West Virginia beat them 31 to 10. As I said, last week, uh, Alex Van Pelt. Uh, national television against Syracuse this is a different story. Mike Gottfried's bringing him home to play in front of the home fans. He has to be a little tight. You could see his record of two and one as Don Nealon on the near side visiting uh, one final time with the major before the offense goes on the field as Jeff Van Horn will tee it up for Pittsburgh. And this one is just about to get started. Over 66,000 at the stadium tonight. And as Chris said, the students have been filing in here since they opened the gates this afternoon. In fact, sometime after four. There is Van Horn as Carl Hayes goes back in a deep safety for the West Virginia Mountaineers. There he is. Tim Williams, number 24, to the far side. Towels are being waved. Fans are up. This one is underway. Garrett Ford across the 25 to the 27 yard line. And now for tonight's road handler starting lineup. It'll be Major Harris out of Pittsburgh at quarterback and behind him is running backs Eugene Napoleon and Rico Tyler. The wide receivers, Greg Dykes and Reggie Rembert. Rembert, very big and he's dangerous. Adrian Moss is the tight end. Coco, Florida, his home. The center, Jeff Price. The guards will be Scott Parker and Del Wolfley. At the tackles, Jack Lynn and Matt Ratcher. We'll check the pit defense after this first play. Draw play. Napoleon breaks it across the 40 to the 41 yard line. It's good for 15 yards. Big key in this game, can they block Spindler? They show pass, he's in a pass rush, tries to get inside, but it's a draw. And that's what West Virginia will do to you. From the back of the offense, Spindler takes himself out of the play, Napoleon's loose. Big running play early for West Virginia. Rico Tyler also with a key block on the linebacker. Napoleon again tries to change his direction. He'll go for one, and that is it. Let's take a look at the pit defense. Mark Spindler and Tony Siragusa are the defensive tackles. Keith Hamilton, the great freshman, and Carney Smith are the outside of defensive ends. Craig Gobb in the middle of linebacker. The two outside backers, Curtis Bray and Ricardo McDonald. In the secondary, Alonzo Hampton and Robert Bradley at the corners, and the two safeties, Dan Crossman and Lewis Reddick. Second down and 10, Mountaineers. First pass play of the evening. Harris gets it away, going long, has his man, James Jack, touchdown.
59 yards to James Jett. He too, Kevin, only a freshman. Brad Carroll to attempt the extra point for the Mountaineers. Perfect on the year, 14 of 14. is up and he's good. Seven to nothing, West Virginia. Number 15, James Jett, the only true freshman on this team. They say he's run a 4-1-8-40, and that's all he's doing is running. Robert Bradley is with him. This ball is a little underthrown. Bradley just missed it. Jumped a little bit early. Jett with great concentration holds it, and they're in early. Here it is from Major Harris' perspective. West Virginia wants to move the pocket. They did, and he gets this thing off just in time. He has pressure. Bradley mistimes it. Jets got it. That was Hamilton applying pressure. Major Harris. And of course, Pitt has seen this kind of situation before. Yeah. Almost deja vu. Three plays this week. One play last week by Syracuse to open the ball game at Pitt Stadium. Well, if one thing they certainly have, as you said, had experience at this, this shouldn't really bother them. They were on that play. It was man-to-man -man defense, but they were there. It was just a mistimed jump. That won't bother them too much. Down Nealon. You know the heart is pumping, but pumping a little bit easier, getting an early seven on the board. And for Mike Gottfried, he won the toss, but elected to defer to the second half. What is the plan this week? That's what he said before last week's game. Whatever happens, stick with the plan. And you must remember, they play two defenses, two units. The Pittsburgh team does, and they believe they can win the second half. They can wear you down. Brad Carroll to kick off for West Virginia. Flag is down deep into the end zone. Fumbled away. It's going to be recovered by Kerbin Richards. But West Virginia, I believe, was offside in the play. And also, Kevin, there is a marker down on the pit side of the 50-yard line. Bill McDonald, our referee tonight. Offsetting, we will do it again from the same spot. I believe that's the first time I've ever seen a double penalty on a kickoff. We have a coachman on the offense. We have. Illegal procedure on the defense. They were out of the restricted zone. Major Harris in his career, 745 plays. That's times he has either thrown or carried the ball. TD's 43 every 17.2 times. That's going in tonight. That'll improve after, after that bomb he just threw. One for one tonight for <laughs> 59 yards. That's a decent start. The signs are numerous. Some pretty darn good ones there also for Major Harris and the Mountaineers. And in fact, Kevin, we could have a record crowd at this one this evening. There was a mob out front when we came in, and that was 4.35 o'clock. Again, the same two deep backs as the Mountaineer roams the sidelines with his banner in hand. Kervin Richards. Along with number 11, that's Steve Israel as the two deep backs. As far as the flags are concerned, it does not seem as though the wind is that much of a factor. But that time, Brad Carroll got the kick up to what it seemed to be a little bit of an existing breeze and knocked it about six yards deep into the end zone. Offsetting penalty, so we'll do it all over again. If you've just turned on, it is 7-0 West Virginia, Major Harris, Throwing the touchdown pass to James Jett. That was on the third play from scrimmage.
Marvin Richards will return. Black down hard at the 19 yard line. Let's take a look at the pit offense. Alex Van Pelt, the young freshman out of San Antonio by way of the state of West Virginia, quarterback Kervin Richards and Ronald Redman are the running backs. The wide receivers, Henry Tooten and Reggie Williams. The tight end is Big Lionel Sykes, the junior college transfer, St. Louis, Missouri, his home. The center is Chris Sistilli. The guards, Chris Getz and Dean Caliguire. The tackles, Roman Matus and Mike Laborio. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Defense, 15 yards, first down. Well, they call it the brawl, the backyard brawl, and it has started off just as that. 15 yards stepped off against West Virginia after they had stopped the kick return at the 19-yard line. So from the 34, here comes Van Pelt with his first play. Richards, right side, crosses the 35 to the 36. And now the West Virginia defense, Jim Gray, the fine nose guard. Defensive tackles, Mike Fox. Keep an eye on him tonight. Scott Summits on the other side. The outside linebackers, Lonnie Brockman and Ronaldo Turnbull. One away from moving up the ladder in sacks. Chris Herring and Theron Ellis, the inside backers. The cornerbacks, Darren Fulton and Preston Waters. And the safeties, Basil Proctor and Daryl Whitmore. Richard slips a tackle, has big yardage, open at the 40, needs a block, is tripped up, and finally is tackled at the 20. Basil Proctor made the tackle. It's a gain of 44 yards by Kervin Richards. This guy is elusive, but he's also very tough. Watch him. This is a cutback. Breaks a tackle, and here's the curving part, a swerving curving as he leaves the safety on the ground, and he's down the road. If he doesn't slip, he could have gone all the way. That was Preston Waters, number five, that he faked out. And Chris Herring, an excellent tackler, is the one that missed the tackle. Little guy, very tough. Ronald Redmond, the fullback. He will have a gain of 10. Inside the 10, it will be first and goal for the Panthers of Pitt. Initial stop. Lonnie Brockman, one of the first men in old gold and blue for West Virginia to come over and make the hit. Mike Gottfried's ball club of the third play. Fell behind 7 to nothing on the 59-yard touchdown strike. And right now, the Panthers driving again as Adam Walker checks into the backfield at tailback. Redmond dances his way at left tackle down to the 7. Ronaldo Turnbull out of St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands, is there to make the hit. There is the guy that they expect to get pressure on Van Pelt, but they crossed him up a little bit here and running the ball. The strength of the West Virginia defense is their strength. They all bench press over 400 pounds on the line. If Pitt is successful in the middle of that defense, it'll cave in. Second down and goal. This is Richard. Left side, touchdown. Three carries, 54 yards, and now a touchdown for Kervin Richards. His third of the year. And who said you can't carry a script? 75 yards. We see the same thing virtually that we saw last week in that opening between Syracuse and Pitt. Ed Frazier to attempt the extra point for the Panthers. Doug Hetzler is the holder. Block. And the tackle will be made. That would have been good for two points had he been able to take it the distance. Basil Proctor is the man who wound up with the football. And it was Mike Fox, the big 6'7 senior out of Akron, Ohio, who got an arm up and blocked it. Flag on the play. The 
forward lateral. So the block will stand. Number 61 left side, he's six foot seven. And he needs it all. You can see the right paw getting up there to block it. Again, West Virginia at home. That's a big play. There's your forward lateral to Proctor. Watch the block by the fullback Redman on the touchdown to the left. Right back, Basil Proctor will come in. He just seals it. Kervin Richards comes right up the middle. Chris gets super blocked there, and Richards nice and low. Now watch the block by the fullback. Left of your screen. He caves in Basil Proctor. And look at Kervin behind Getz and the rest of that line. Nice job by Pittsburgh and some tremendous running. Nice and low. See how Richards gets low and gets into the end zone. We've got a one-point game. You also could see Sistelli, the freshman center, blocking for that man. Kervin Richards is off to a great night. His third touchdown of the year, two by rushing and one by passing. ESPN's College Football Saturday kicks off next week, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, with College Game Day. Bob Carpenter, Bino Cook, and Lee Corso for a preview of all the day's action in college football. Then at 12.30, Ivy League action between Pennsylvania taking on Columbia. Then at 7 o'clock, Kevin and I will be in Knoxville, Tennessee, with the 12th-ranked Volunteers, who had a huge win today, take on Georgia. Then at 10.30, it's out to the Pac-10 as Arizona State will battle UCLA all next Saturday. This is Van Horn's kickoff. It is coming down to Hayes at the 8. He'll be tackled at the 21. Doug Hetzler on the special teams, number 24, making the tackle. And just as we saw last week, both teams scoring on their opening possession of the night. Major Harris out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ironically, the young man on the other side of the line of scrimmage, Alex Van Pelt, from the state of West Virginia. Harris, look in pass, incomplete. In and out of the hands of number two, Greg Dykes, up at the 30-yard line. Mike Godfrey here for two weeks in a row now. He's gone down seven to nothing, but I told you it's not going to bother him. The thought, the person I thought that would bother was Alex Van Pelt. But Pittsburgh is famous for scripting plays. They knew they were going to run the ball. They didn't panic. They stayed with their running game, and they made it work to get close again, 7-6. Draw play. Ford. And Garrett will take it up around the 22, maybe the 23-yard line as Curtis Bray from his outside linebacking spot on the left and Ricardo McDonald combining for the stop. Remember, they beat Spindler on that first series, number 93. Watch him feel this now with Wolf. He's going to feel the block. He's not running around it. He's staying with it, staying with it. Now he's going to get rid of him. Get rid of him. Get in there and tackle for it. That's good defensive tackle play. Felt it. Harris under pressure, going to run, breaks off the tackle, and by golly, he is very close to the first down as Craig Gobb tripped him up, and it's all depending on the spotting of the football. And from here, Ken, it looks as though he's about a half yard shy. That's the reason for the reaction from the crowd. Look at Mike Gottfried right there by the first down marker. He wants a real close look at this. Think about Major Harris. That was perfect defense by Pittsburgh. He still got away. Forced him up the middle. Early in the ball game, a 7-6 lead by West Virginia. And the Mountaineers will not take the chance, or so it would appear. Greg Herzog. You see the numbers out of him. His longest 69 of the season. 43-yard average. Kicking to number three, Alonzo Hampton. Yep, 
Sniffen with a little bit of a high pass. This is a driving, driving spiral. Hampton inside the 10. All he sees is blue, and he will be crushed at the 13-yard line. 65 yards in the kick, one on the return. Boris Graham with a stop. We got a great one-point game. Your truck of NASCAR. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. When the Sharper Image wanted an official vehicle that fit the lifestyles of their customers, they chose Chevy truck over Ford. Maybe it was because of our Sharper Image. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. College Football Saturday, Pittsburgh versus West Virginia, is brought to you by Levi's 505 and 506 jeans. And by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevy truck. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley, along with Chris Fowler from Morgantown, West Virginia. Packed house, and there you see what has happened so far. Two touchdowns, two opening possessions by these two ball clubs. Adam Walker tries the right side. There is not much there because Jim Gray steps up into the hole and makes the hit. Jim's a sophomore out of West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. Well, as you see, the scores going up on the, the board, the lower part of the screen. Congratulations as the East of the American League now wrapped up. Congratulations to the Blue Jays. Two one-run games over Baltimore. Richards, left side, spins off one tackler, and he's going to be pushed back. He had made the 20-yard line of the 21. The Ron Ellis from that right inside linebacking spot hit him. He's going to be about three yards shy of the first. Nice job by Theron Ellis. Again, this I formation is just like it's just like an I formation. He's reading, sitting, waiting. He sees the flow coming. He beats the block there, and then boom, he's standing there. He's almost like a safety. And when he gets a hold of Kervin, there's no swerving. Four carries for Kervin Richards, 59 yards. Van Pelt, first throw of the night. Marker's down all over the place, and he just throws this one away. Turnbull was the man who was applying the pressure. Number 87. Two markers came down deep at its offensive holding pit. This one will be declined because of the third down. West Virginia should get decent field position. Well, that's the first time that the young man has thrown tonight in that entire first series because of the good running game. They didn't try to put it up. Holding offense. Penalty decline. Fourth down. Chris gets number 72, left side of your screen. There it is. You can see the jersey. Can't see the number because you can see the jersey. That was number 98, Jim Gray, that he grabbed. Darren Fulton, the single safety for the Mountaineers. Good luck from behind of Brian Greenfield. The left footer gets it away, but there are markers down at whistles. Good ball foul. Ball start. Offense. Repeat fourth down. He'll tack five yards on. 
Mike Godfrey is saying to himself, this is not good. His team is jumpy, and this crowd is not helping. An extremely hard place to hear, not only because of the proximity of the crowd, but primarily because of the exuberance of the crowd. Greenfield again. Low line drive kick. Full around the run, and he is not going to be able to do anything with that one. That's an excellent kick. Out of bounds inside the 40, down at the 36-yard line. 48 yards in the kick and nothing on the return because he kicked it out of bounds. That's a good job. The pit defense. Take a look at that over the last 10 years. National rankings. And in fact, their current numbers are pretty close to that, aren't 257. they? 257.1, I think, this year. Harris fakes the draw. It holds up the lineman still going. Ball is tipped and incomplete. And it was Curtis Bray who got a hand up and knocked it away. And the guy I was looking for was that big number 88, Reggie Rimber. Remember one thing about Rimber. Not only does he have the speed of an outside receiver, incredible size to have that kind of speed at 6'6", 200 pounds. Pitt defense did a nice job there. They forced Major out of the pocket, and then as they will all night, they took their defense to the sideline with them. They had enough guys in front of them, so they were able to deflect that pass. That's what they will try to do. Stay with him as he goes to the sideline. in the pocket this time. Harris will be knocked out of bounds at around the 42-yard line. And won't be enough for the first down. He'll miss it by about four as Tom Sims comes over to make the bump. Right, one of the things the Pitt defensive line, watch 92 now, Hamilton. Major wants to come out here, but see how he takes an outside rush and he just keeps leverage. He's going to force Major into the short side of the field where he pumps and finally gets dragged down for a shorter gain. Well, that's what they need to do. They need to keep outside leverage, force him back to the short side of the field or up the middle where their defense can help him. Harris, two completions or two runs for 13 yards. Option play, breaks it out for the first down, crosses midfield, and it will be first and ten Mountaineers as Ricardo McDonald was in the vicinity, but not before the major advances the chains across the way. All right, here's the other side of what West Virginia can do. Not only can this kid throw, this is an option team. Here's Spindler and Gobb and everybody flowing, flowing. Spindler's taken down by a good block there. And now look at the strength of Harris right through that small opening, and now he's like a running back. Loose in the secondary, slides for the first down. Outstanding option play. Draw play. Big opening for Napoleon down to the 41-yard line. Craig Gobb from his middle linebacking spot had to come up and make the tackle. Interesting story, Eugene started off his career at Pitt and then transferred here to West Virginia and his pin pound is Tony Dorsett. That's the reason he wears number 33. They still stay in touch. He said he hoped that Tony was watching tonight. Rimbert on the pitch reverse. Gets one block and he'll be knocked down for a loss. Back at the 46-yard line is Dan Crossman from his strong safety position will knock him down for a minus six on the play. Crossman, another great story, started in Kansas as a starting cornerback as a freshman with Mike Gottfried when he was the head coach at Kansas. And Bob Valicente, the defensive coordinator here, was the defensive coordinator, excuse me, at Pittsburgh, was the defensive coordinator in Kansas. Now they're all together again, but they're at the University of Pittsburgh, and Crossman is a senior. Mountaineers need just inside the 40. Pocket breaks down, now Harris in trouble, and it's intercepted. Cardi Smith down the near sideline in the foot race. Did he step out of bounds? Yes, at the 13-yard line.
We all know what Major can do on the positive side. Now, here is a problem. He's great. You'll never see a better job by a defense. There's Crossman in front of you. The middle linebacker forces him outside, and then you've got an outside linebacker, McDonald. Everybody has leverage. Now he makes a mistake. This is a defensive end that intercepts this from the other side. Now, that's a defense that never quits, keeps hustling. Smith down the sideline where he will step out of bounds. Obviously, Major should not have thrown that ball. It's what defensive coordinators like to call spreading the fence and keeping it parallel. That's what Pitt did. Van Pelt whirls a time, and this one is going to be incomplete. Ball was not catchable. Orlando Truitt is the man the pass was intended for, and it was Mike Fox who was crawling all over the back of Alex Van Pelt as he was about to throw. Alex had a little happy feet there. A lot of pressure from West Virginia. Nice job. And last week, Syracuse let him sit in the pocket. West Virginia's not doing that. And Alex a little jumpy back there. Good coverage by the secondary, West Virginia. Kervin Richards. Left side, breaks it open, he's down to the six-yard line. Daryl Whitmore comes up from his free safety spot to make the tackle, and Lavorio, you could see big number 76, convoying and taking the man out of the hole. Great block. Richards doing a fine job and a good game plan by Pitt here. They're attacking uh, West Virginia right at the strength of their defense, which is up front, five, five carries, 67 yards for Kervin Richards, but give it to the offensive line. They've done a great job. There you see the football just outside the five. You'll know if they pick it up. They need the three. Derek Lewis. Hot pursuit, and he'll be knocked down for a loss by Preston Waters and a loss of four. Any kind of short yardage, you want to get a fullback turn laterally. Watch the West Virginia guys. Right off the bat, Gray is in there. He meets the lead block in the backfield. Now you've got a fullback running to the sideline, exactly what you want. Preston Waters runs him down. Great job defensively by the Mountaineers, and it brings on number one, Ed Frazier, who is four of six on field goal attempts this year. This one, an attempt of 26 yards. And on the second kick that Pitt has tried tonight, it has been blocked. First a field goal, or first an extra point, now a field goal. Here's another Chevy that really holds on the track. Chevy Truck, the official truck of NASCAR. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Most of my friends don't know what they're going to do after graduation. But I've already locked in guaranteed skill training in the Army. Qualify now and you can reserve even the Army's most sought-after technical training, up to 12 months in advance, through the Army's delayed entry program. Sure, being a soldier won't be easy, but then nothing worth having ever is. Liberty Mutual presents the accident that never happened. Because as America's largest insurer for workers' compensation, Liberty Mutual has done more to help prevent injuries on the job than any other insurance company. Caring for people is why America believes in liberty. Great view, huh? America believes in liberty. Liberty Mutual Insurance. When the Bass Angler Sportsman Society went fishing for an official truck, they reeled in a Chevy Astro. Rumor has it they were hooked on our superior towing power. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. 
Back in Morgantown where the Mountaineers have blocked their second kick in the first quarter. It's going to be Ronaldo Turnbull, number 87. Look how high he gets. It almost hits him in the face. And he blocks it. Pitt misses a scoring opportunity. First it was Mike Fox, 6'7", six, 6'5", six, Ronaldo Turnbull. They need to cut those guys' legs out from under him, Ron. Block him low. Turnbull showed that his vertical uh, is extreme, particularly for a large person. See what the major has up his sleeve from the corner. Garrett Ford. Whoa, he really gets back down at Nelson Walker. Let's go to Bob Carpenter for an update. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. And you might call this our run and shoot update. Andre Ware and the Cougars of Houston taking on Jerry Burnt and his Rice Owls. And tonight, fourth quarter, it is 55 to nothing. He has 413 yards throwing, seven touchdowns, 529 total yards. Ron Franklin. Thanks very much. Andre Ware and the Houston Cougars. Wow. Some kind of passing offense. Draw play. This is Ford again up near the 30-yard line, and he's close to the first down. It appears he will be short by just a couple of inches. As Pitt going with not what they call their second unit, but unit 1A defensively. Wholesale changes, all 11. B Company is something else I think they're called. Ford is going to be held up in the backfield. That's Jeff Esther, who is down and catches him by the ankles, and that will not be enough for the first down. There is a marker down across the way. Offside hit. This defense, this 1A defense, comes on the field, fired up. Sometimes it can work against them. Defense. Five yards, first down. Changing of the guards, so to speak. Look what they have done as far as the series last week. Against Syracuse, you can see 12 series, three series for B Company. First downs, 12 and two points, 23 and zero. The sack's about even, actually more in the 1A column. They played less. Making the draw. Harris, great protection. Good coverage in the secondary as he scrambles out, gets his pass, it is complete to Jet. Inside the 50 and he's all the way down to the 43. Doug Hetzler made the tackle, but it's good for 22 yards. Believe it or not, they practice this. It's called the scramble drill. Offensive co coordinator Bob Shaw told us about it. Now you're gonna see a mistake here defensively. They have him contained right here, but watch Mark Gunn take the inside. Well, number 90 took the inside, let him outside. Now Jet in the scramble drill finds the open spot, comes back to Major Harris, wide open for the first down. Harris straight up the middle on the handoff. That's Aaron Evans as the number one defensive unit for Pitt comes back onto the field. Tony Siragusa, the right defensive tackle for the Panthers, is the man at the bottom of the stack. You know, two points that were made by the coaches this week. Don Nalen said he wanted to make Pitt play more of a lateral defense. He didn't want to go back to the pocket and throw. Wants the look in pass, gets it away, and he was being tackled just as he got it away. That's Ricardo McDonald. And now let's go down to the field and Chris Fowler. Okay, Ron, we've seen one of the new rules in college football come into play. Kickers not allowed to use the team. Much tougher to get the ball off, off the field. And Pitt's Ed Frazier has twice had that problem. He was a high school soccer player, the best of the Pitt kickers to get the ball up off the ground quickly. That's why he moved up from the third team to the first team. Got to get the guys in front of him to block some uh, Mountaineers, though, back upstairs. 7 6 our score. Mountaineers on top. First quarter. Ball is hit in the air, incomplete, and that's Keith Hamilton who got a piece of it from that left defensive end position, or left linebacker, I should say. 6-7, Keith Hamilton, and he got a piece of the major's arm. It'll be fourth down. Gregory Herzog, 
boy, 62 yards on his first. He doesn't need nearly that here. Pooch kick. Amonzo Hamilton lets it go, and the nine iron just bites right there at the five yard line. They're going to put it dead inside the five at the two. 35 yards of the kick. West Virginia seven and Pitt six. Hi, I'm Ed Linder. World famous interior designer Mario Buwata, known affectionately to such clients as Malcolm Forbes and Barbara Walters as the Prince of Chintz, is introducing the Buwata Collection for the John Whittacombe Company here at Linder and Associates. Incredible examples like the round dining room table, this pair of demi lune consoles, the secretary bookcase, his Regency cabinet, his chinoiserie console, and the fabulous Spencer chair. Be among the first in the world to see the fabulous Buwata Collection at Linder and Associates. This is Pontiac's Excitement Countdown. Now, Pontiac buyers can count on $200 million in cash back direct from the factory. Cash back on all Pontiacs in stock. You can count on up to $1,850 cash back on Grand Prix and Grand Am. Or 2.9% GMAC financing on any new 89 Pontiac. Plus, you could save hundreds more with special factory-to-dealer incentives. Count on the biggest total savings of the year. Now, see your Greater Pittsburgh Pontiac dealer. Sunday, you could try watching every NFL game, but there's a better way. Start with ESPN's Emmy Award-winning NFL Game Day. Learn what to look for and why in the only hour-long preview of the day's action. Later, NFL Primetime showcases every key play from every game. The shows the pros would watch if they weren't busy. NFL Game Day and NFL Primetime, Sundays on ESPN. Ron Franklin, along with Kevin Kiley and Chris Fowler from Morgantown, West Virginia. A sold-out house. I mean, they are hanging from the rafters tonight. That young man is from the state of West Virginia, playing now for Pitt. Only a freshman. He has been to the stadium before, but you have to witness it on the field for yourself to know exactly what kind of pressure these fans can put on you. Richards right up the middle will take it in the vicinity of the nine. Some other scores from around the country. North Carolina State has jumped out big in the second period. Arizona trailing the Ducks of Oregon. They're at halftime. Texas A&M, who we had on our opening week against LSU, shutting out Southern Mississippi. Florida, big win over Mississippi State. Van Pelt. Going to go long. It is Tootin and a marker down, and I think that's going to be offensive pass interference. As Tootin put his left arm in the midsection of the defensive back, Daryl Whitmore. If this is an offensive interference. They'll tear this place down. It was pretty obvious. Oh, oh my. Oh. Watch number 81. There's the pass. Now he's making an adjustment. That's a little late. That's a little after it happened. Now the first push came from Tootin as he went down the sideline. Now the defensive the defensive man pushed back, but Tootin is the one that pushed first. That was Preston Water. So the Panthers move the sticks and move them in a big way out to midfield. About to go under two minutes left in this opening period. Seven to six. The Mountaineers on top. <laughs> Delay to the fullback, and he's going to be hit and knocked down at the line of scrimmage as Redmond had the ball put in his stomach, and he waited for a moment as though he was waiting for the pursuit to go by him. Yeah, and it didn't go by, did it? Nope. And that's a trick play that Pitt runs, and uh, what he's supposed to do is stop. If everybody runs the other way, obviously he'll keep going, but didn't quite happen that way. Here's Van Pelt taking the handoff. And Red just waiting, but not for long. Here comes West Virginia. Van Pelt's incomplete, looking for Tootin on the near sideline. 
and he missed him badly at about the 35 as Daryl Fulton and Basil Proctor had the cover for the Mountaineers. Well, this is a different Alex Van Pelt, and it's different for a number of reasons. He lived 20 minutes from here as a junior in high school, went to Texas as a senior, and also he's playing against a little bit of a different defense. There's, uh, there's Mr. Van Pelt, the uh, father of Alex Van Pelt. Got to be feeling the pressure, and West Virginia's putting on some pressure. Syracuse didn't last week. Option play, this is Richard. Turns the corner, loses the football, and West Virginia has recovered Darren Fulton. Well, of course, Alex Van Pelt is not an option quarterback, but they're figuring they're going to surprise him. They get it to Richards. Proctor, number 42, does a terrific job holding the block and stacking it up. And Turnbill with helping him. Okay, here comes Kirvin Richards around the end. Now 42, Proctor out here is really the one that made the play. Turnbull pulls the ball loose. And here comes West Virginia. Running play right up the middle will go for very short yardage. Garrett Ford. Eugene Napoleon, I beg your pardon. Number 33 on the carry. He'll take it to midfield. A gain of only one. To continue the thought that I made a moment ago about what Don Nealon wanted the pit defense to do. And on the other side of the coin, Mike Gottfried's defense said they wanted to maintain the fence in the major. Not get anybody out of sync. That's when he kills you. Blitz up the middle, hit immediately as Rico Tyler on his first carry of the night, and it's Craig Gobb who was coming from up the middle to make the hit along with Carney Smith. When you blitz, you have to remember, don't run by anything. He stacked Gobb. See, nobody picks him up. Don't run by that, Craig, and he didn't. He gets a little help. Fullbacks don't have a chance like that. He's That's a quick hitter, and Gobb was there before the ball was almost. And with that, the end of the first 15 minutes here at Morgantown. So as they change ends of the field, we got just what we expected. To Morgantown, Ron Franklin, Kevin Kiley, and Chris Fowler. One point ball game. Harris under pressure gets a pickup block. Still running, delivers the pass incomplete, and the marker goes down. And it looks as though Major had run beyond the lighter scrimmage when he delivered the pass. It was Rico Tyler who came back to throw the block on Mark Spindler. Illegal receiver downfield. One of the things you really have to do defensively with a guy like this is just keep running. Keep staying with it. And Spindler came along and he got knocked off. And here's your wide shot of the defense, pit in white. Major Harris, see how the whole defense is shifting. Everybody's shifting to this side of the field. That's what Major Harris will do to you. Major needs to be aware of where he is on the field. He had pressure and tossed that one up a little bit for grabs. Good coverage by Pitt. They forced him to the sideline. He needs to learn to just step out. Has a habit, Major Harris, of trying to make the big play all the time. He does so often, they don't want to rein him in, but he can cost them. Well, a lineman downfield, the penalty is declined with the third down and 13, and now it's fourth, and the Mountaineers will have to kick it away. Greg Herzog. Another booming high coverage kick. Hampton all the way back at the 10. Runs into his own man. He'll be shy of the 20. 44 yards in the kick, eight on the return. And the storyline on this one so far is we have just completed the first 15 minutes of play. Harris, 81 yards, two completions. One touch, one interception. Van Pelt, a little bit slow in getting started tonight. Take a look, West Virginia with two blocked picks so far. Kervin Richards off to a great start. Great start on the first series, and hasn't done much really since then. Two excellent adjustments by both defenses.
to Richards. Goes right side, carries a tackler with him as he goes to the 22, and it's Jim Gray defensively. Let's go back to Bob Carpenter for another update, Bob. All right, Ron, they also love their Saturday night football at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. James Ross of the Razorbacks, a 10-yard run, and playing against their ex-assistant, UTEP head coach David Lee, Hog 7, minors nothing, first quarter. Well, the Beans ought to be happy about that. Arkansas going on top, 7 to nothing. Mike Godfrey's ball club trailing by one here in Morgantown. First minute of the second quarter. Richards again tries to turn the corner. They'll knock him out of bounds at the 25 as Chris Herring, the leading tackler for the Mountaineers, comes over to knock him out. Pitt has gone to two tight ends down here, getting conservative. They have the young quarterback, and they're trying to force the ball a little bit. West Virginia creeping up on the line of scrimmage, but now Pitt has a tight end that can go deep on this team. They need to be very aware of that. And in Lionel Sykes, he can run. The Panthers need the 28. Drop play. Richards wrapped up in the backfield. Hello, Jim Gray. Gray along with Chris Herring stepping up to knock him down, and he'll be shy of the first down by about four. Gray is very quick. He's a middle guard type, but they let him do a lot of things. They let him run around blocks. He's right behind the official. He meets the center head on, gets rid of him right there for the counter. That was a counter. They were trying to get Gray to go to one side and run the other way, but he wasn't having any of it. Nice play. Brian Greenfield with the punt. Another line drive kick. Fulton lets it get over his head, retrieves it at the 20, and he will be tackled at the 24-yard line. 53 yards on the kick, two on the return. Talk to me, CJ. What are you really feeling? It's very sweet. This is what sets every Mazda apart. It's called Kansai Engineering. Engineering based on human feelings. Keep an eye on his pulse, please. With it, Mazda can actually learn how to create cars that feel just right. Because to us, feeling right is what driving is really all about. Mazda. It just feels Hurry and you'll make it. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, you're back. But sometimes he has to show off a few moves of his own, the kind of moves that made him a first-string halfback. Sam Singletary shares a feeling with everyone at Delta. He loves what he's doing, and it shows. We love Thanks. to fly, it's the and it shows. Dry is bold and wet. The taste of dry is less sweet. Nickelode Dry. Brewed longer, so taste after taste. There's just no aftertaste. Nickelode Dry. Bold taste with no aftertaste. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Pittsburgh versus West Virginia, is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. By Delta Airlines, we love to fly and it shows. And by Anheuser-Busch, we brew our fine quality beers to be enjoyed responsibly. Remember, know when to say when. The house is packed, and what you're looking at right there Defense 1A, the second unit for the Pitt Panthers. This is Ford. Garrett Ford takes it out to around the 28, and let's go down to the sidelines again, and Chris Fowler. 
Okay, Ron, you mentioned the 1A defense back in the game. Remember the first time they were in West Virginia, quickly drove across midfield. They were pulled out. Mike Gothley was hot. He was up in their face talking to Mark Gunn as they came off. He's given them a second chance, but if they don't perform well this time, they're not seeing that much for the rest of the game. Ron? Now well, there's Michael. Gave him a stern talking to. We'll see if it does any good. At the option play, it's Major Harris. Turns it up for five. Has close to 10. In fact, he does. Will be shoved out of bounds at the 38 by Doug Hetzler. And that is enough for the Mountaineer first down. What we really haven't seen so far in this game is much of Major Harris. Early in the first quarter, he did okay. Now, this is going to be his all the way. Good blocking at the corner. They steal it off. The secondary a little slow getting over. And look how quick Major Harris is. Right to the sideline. This is a guy they cannot let him get outside. Kevin's got four carries for 31 yards. Pass complete to Rembert at the 45, breaks it out. He can run. Rembert for the touchdown, 62 yards. That's Brad Carroll who has come on to attempt the extra point as Major Harris has now thrown distance jobs of 59 and 62 and the extra point is good and we have an eight point ball game in favor of the Mountaineers. Reggie Rembert a JC transfer from Independence Kansas the Major Harris makes this play the option they stretch the defense and now you have Steve Israel coming up to tackle 6'6 200 pound Reggie Rembert who can fly he doesn't get it done. And no one's going to catch him down the line, but it's Major Harris coming down the line, forcing people to take care of their responsibilities that creates the one on one situation and the possibility for disaster. Here's Major. See everybody coming up? Everybody coming up on the option. Here's Israel. He's in position. He just cannot make the play. Doug Hetzler was too close to the line of scrimmage. He didn't have the angle, and Reggie could run forever. You have to wonder if that is the last we'll see of 1A as a unit tonight. If there was a problem with the two platoon system, it's not in the front seven for Pitt. It's in the secondary. Those kids are young. They have very little experience. So the Panthers trying to regroup on the far sideline as that man right there has haunted them with a couple of distant strikes tonight for touchdowns. The first one on the evening to Dykes or to James Jett, I beg your pardon, and into Reggie Rembert. Rembert was averaging almost 19 yards per reception. He didn't do anything to hurt his average right there, his first catch of the night. Well, that's a five yard pass and catch if the tackle is made. That's kind of an odd and misleading statistic. 14 to 6, the Mountaineers on top, early going second quarter. Brad Carroll kicks it off. This is going to come down to Israel at the three. Oh, my goodness, does he take a shot at the 15. That's Roger Dixon, along with number 22, John Murphy, who greeted him shy of the 20. Israel has had a couple of lightning bolts for the last two plays. He's had a tough night in five minutes. Van Pelt delivers to Tootin incomplete at the 29-yard line. Darren Fulton was climbing up his back, and Tootin shake it up on the play a bit. The difference between this week and last week for Van Pelt 
The secondary covering the receivers a little closer as you see Tootin leaving the field limping. And he's getting pressure. Syracuse sat back a little more. They didn't pressure him much. And this is a whole different atmosphere. It was at home last week. And now he's at home, but with 70,000 neighbors screaming at him, not for him. He's the big play guy, is Tootin. Baron Jackson comes in replacing him at wide receiver. Kevin Richards. Belted hard. That's 98. Jim Gray, one of the first men to come over. Not a bad pass by Van Pelt. That's, that's interference. Fulton hit him before the ball got there. Look at his leg. His left leg, knee, got twisted up. Left under his own power. Kevin Richards now 11 carries for 80 yards, but the big thing for the Panthers is he's the top number. They need to convert a third down. Pass tip and intercepted by Darren Fulton. He will be knocked down at the 31. Sure, the play is made by Darrell Whitmore, number 11, playing with a steel plate in his ankle. Wasn't even sure if he could play. Here's Whitmore, the safety. Gets his hands on it. And now West Virginia picks off another one. Darrell Fulton will take it to the sideline, and he's down. But the key to that play was Van Pelt. He wasn't sure. When he let it go, it flew too high. Mountaineers from the 30. This is Garrett, he wants to throw. Looking for the end zone for Rimberg, and it is incomplete. What a job by Lewis Riddick. Lewis Riddick got position, Rembert could not come back. Number five, I believe it was number five, he got inside of Rembert. Read this thing very well, it's an option pass, very tough to read, now watch Riddick, see Riddick? He turned inside of him, looked like he put his hand up, but there was no way Rembert could get to the ball without going through Riddick. That made the difference. Alonzo Hamilton would love to have the opportunity again. He mistimed his jump. Running play right up the middle. This is going to be Eugene Napoleon. He will go for short yardage. It's going to be third down at about nine yards for the Mountaineers to pick up the first down. Some other scores. Texas leading Penn State. They're in the first period down in Austin tonight. Oklahoma State with an early shutout going. UCLA over California. They're in halftime. And LSU shutting out Ohio University. Still in the first period. Our Tigers, score. Tigers need a win down there, don't they, Ron? Do they ever. Blitz is on. Harris feeling the pressure, gets the pass away, and there's nobody close. Ricardo McDonald is the man who was applying the initial pressure. Then Carney Smith also grabbed a hold. This is the experience from downstate cousin Philadelphia Eagles. 46, see the three men in the middle there covering everybody, and now the blitz. Here comes Crossman, right of your screen. He's the initial guy, number 31. See, he makes the pressure, gets Harris turned the wrong way, and then Major just tosses it up. 46-yard attempt by Carroll. Has the distance. Off to the left and no good. So there's a break of the action with 10-21 left until halftime. Mountaineers by eight. 14 to six, West Virginia leading Pitt. And our student athlete of the game is brought to you by the U.S. Army. Get an edge on life, be all you can be. And tonight's recipient is West Virginia linebacker Chris Herring. Chris is a secondary education major with a 3.6 grade point average. Superb young man, says his head coach Don Nealon. He'd it. like to have a basket full. Yeah, says the nicest kid he's ever had here. They've had some good ones in West Virginia.
Van Pelt with the play action. Going long over the middle, looking for Tootin, overthrown and incomplete. Preston Waters, one of the men downfield covering, along with Williams. Yeah, Lionel Sykes, number 88, wide open on a drag pattern. And Lionel, here's Tootin's back in the game, and now he's leaving again. He's lipping. And he went long to Tootin, who was covered, but uh, Sykes on the drag pattern was open. And he'll go back and tell him. Well, for young Mr. Van Pelt, one of seven, one interception, 41 yards tonight. Up the sideline, it is complete. That's Baron Jackson inside the 45 to the 43, and Waters wraps him up. And a marker down back at the 30-yard line. And Van Pelt is extremely upset. Number 72, Chris Getz. Offensive guard, hands a little high and a little high again. Backyard brawl. Had a similar penalty last week, and I, a lot of times that's technique. You just get your hands up too high, but the second one didn't look like technique, did it, Ron? Chris, senior out of Jackson Heights, wants to go to work after graduation for the federal government and law enforcement. That's yeah. what his major is. And he showed right there that he can govern his area. <laughs> so with a 15-yard penalty, it'll push it back to the 15. And for the Panthers, they need the 40-yard line, their own 40. Exactly what they don't need with the young quarterback in a situation like this. Over the middle, it's Tootin. Cuts it upfield, and he is close to the Panther first down. Basil Proctor finally knocked him to the turf. It's a tough kid, Tootin. He's playing on a bad knee. Van Pelt, not bad either. He's had a rough night, had his best pass called back. And here's a crossing pattern. Now, this thing I told you would have worked earlier with Sykes, and now they go to Tootin a little bit deeper. Look at this thing, over the short coverage. Drops it right in there to Mr. Tootin, who's going to take a lick even with the bad leg. Nice play. Gutty performance there by Tootin. Well, let's go down to the sideline. Chris can update us on the injury to Tootin. That's right, fellas. Tootin is a tough guy. You saw him run that crossing pattern, but he has what's called a hyperflex of the left half. Earlier on, he tried to run a fly pattern and looked very slow. It'll be tough for him to run those deep routes later on in the game, but he's going to try to tough it out anyway, fellas. It is a first down for the Pitt Panthers. The ball just shy of the 40. Redmond, the fullback, goes right guard for a couple. Clock going under nine minutes to play until halftime as Warren Suber is the man who makes the play defensively. Pitt has had good success running with two tight ends because they're forcing the outside linebackers, the guys that were putting pressure on Van Pelt to play those tight ends, and they can't come a rushing. That's been a very good, very good uh, uh, formation for them. Van Pelt dumps it off here in the flat, incomplete. That's Richards, his tailback off his fingertips. As the Mountaineer, who is out of the upper deck down below us, fires off around. Ooh. Wish we had known that was coming. Huh? You see a little aid being administered to Tootin on the sideline. You're running that tape a little bit farther up the cab, which uh, Chris alluded to a moment ago that that's the problem area for him. They need the 50. It is complete over the middle to Reggie Williams. Good for the first down, plus nine. Whitmore knocked him out of bounds, but not before he makes it to the Mountaineer 41-yard line. 18 yards in the play. 
What a job by the offensive line here for Van Pelt. Now, they didn't have any tight ends in the game here. Look at Turnbull getting turned inside. Redmond makes a block on the corner, and Van Pelt now starting to get his feet under him. He'll stand in there and throws that thing. Fires just a, just a shot in there to Reggie Williams for another first down. That's three big passes. One was called back by Van Pelt. Redmond goes right side, hammers his way down into the vicinity of the 38. Scott Summits is the man who makes the stop. Kevin, that, by the way, is the first converted third down for the Pitt Panthers tonight. And make it on the pass play. As you mentioned, they had one a moment ago, and it was called back because of the personal foul. This kid, we've seen what this kid can do. We saw him, uh, we heard about him at Boston College. He was 15 for 18 last week, 25 for 32. If he gets heated up, he can be tough. Kevin Richards breaks it open inside the 30, and it's another pit first down. Lonnie Brockman from his left outside linebacking spot comes over to put the stop on him. But Richards running extremely well tonight. Some good blocking. Has the first down, and the Chiefs will move again. Down Nalem. He has the trophy in his office that this pit ball club would love to have, along with several other clubs in the East. Emerson. Pelt delivers it incomplete. Reggie Williams, the intended receiver, but Darren Fulton knocked it away. It appeared for the world it was going to be a completion. All of a sudden, Fulton knocked it free. Reggie's had some difficulty early in the season catching the ball. Here's number two. Full blitz. Van Pelt stood in there, delivers this ball right on the button. Fulton is there, but the ball was there first. Reggie should have had it. Well, Henry Tooten is just limping back on the field after the tape job. Up for a crossing pattern here, and look out for the tight end, Sykes, number 88. They set the screen. This is Redmond. Cuts in behind the block, and he is inside the 25 to the 23. Chris Herring, leading tackler in the ball club for West Virginia, brings him down. Going to be a third down, Kev, they'll need about three and a half. Redmond is more like a halfback than a fullback, and this is Paul Hackett's influence. He's got two good receivers. He's 22. He's just kind of sliding in there. Screen play over Turnbull, who's 6'5". Nice job by Van Pelt. And now Redmond, who knows where to get the yards, turns it right upfield. Not quite a first down, but good yardage. Middle blitz is on, also from the outside, and it's incomplete. Lonnie Brockman, number 97, was pressuring Van Pelt. All right, this is the other outside backer. We talked about Turnbull, but Brockman is no slouch. A guy that can really hurt you. Came in with three sacks and got one there. What's going through this young man's mind? He has had an extra point and a field goal attempt block. This is a 42-yard attempt. Has the distance, and he's good. They're going to say officially 41 yards, and Frazier brings Pitt to within five. We'll be right back. Franklin, uh, along with Kevin Kiley and Chris Fowler. Tonight, Morgantown, West Virginia. This is week number five. And, Kev, we've had some great ones in this one tonight, falling right in line with uh, the four previous weeks. They seem to be getting better. This is no surprise. These two teams just they hate each other. Well, not really, but on the field they do. Well, you probably would get that exact commentary from them <laughs> for the 60 minutes that they're on the field anyway. This is Van Horn with the kickoff. Hayes waits at the seven. Yeah. 
Eric Holtzman on the special teams makes the stop on Hayes just shy of the 25 yard line. Major Harrison company will come back on the field for the Mountaineers. Major with a couple of touchdown passes tonight, one of 59, the other of 62 as he has found Jet and also Rimbert. I loved his opening tonight. Mountaineers unite. Harris on the option. Gonna be closed in, and for one of the few times tonight, he will be stopped for nothing. Craig Gobb, the middle linebacker, as you could see, that fence we talked about back in the first quarter is nobody would make the error of going ahead and stepping across. Well, they really loaded up on the right side. The initial blocking was great right here at the corner for Harris. But look at McDonald. Keeps him going laterally. Bray, excuse me, 58. And here comes Craig Gobb. Look at all the guys going laterally. They actually overran him and finally dragged him down. Nice job. Making the draw. Great protection for Harris. Now it breaks down going to be hit, loses the football, and it's going to go out of bounds. Carney Smith and Keith Hamilton, the two outside people, are the men who applied the pressure and knocked him down. I tell you, they're calling this a forward pass. Now, I, I, he's either in the grasp, he's either, look, look at this thing, he's either down. Here comes Hamilton. And they're calling that a forward pass. Now, his arm did start forward, but that's a judgment call by the official, and that is a tough call for Pitt. It happened right in front of the 5,000 Pitt fans who bought tickets to come down here. You could hear their response. And he is sacked by Mark Spindler. Major Harris back at the 19-yard line on third down. Oh, it's tremendous team defense. You're going to get rushed from the outside by Hamilton, number 92. Now, Mark Spindler's on the inside. See Hamilton go the wide? And here comes Spindler. They have him boxed in completely. See Hamilton? He had nowhere to go on the outside. They had him pinned in on the other side, and Spindler cleaned it up. Herzog's punt back to Hampton at the 35. Weaves his way for 10 tough yards. And Pitt. With four minutes and 11 seconds left until halftime, will have great field position. Arkansas now by 10. Some other scores. Minnesota by three over Indiana State. Texas now trailing Penn State. They're in the second period. Georgia fell to South Carolina. We'll have Georgia next week against Tennessee up in Knoxville. That one of the surprises today, and the other, just in case you missed it, was... Clemson falling to the Duke Blue Devils. And of course, Bob will have all those scores and highlights from around the country coming up at halftime, which is just over four minutes away. Van Pelt looks into a deep zone, throws it complete at the 35 as Baron Jackson found the seam on the near sideline. Pitt is starting to take control of this game. Their offensive line, when West Virginia does not come with extra pressure, the Pitt offensive line is doing a tremendous job. He has all day, and when you give this kid all day, he'll drop it into a zone to Baron Jackson. Look at this thing. He had that nose of the ball coming down. Nice pass. Right in front of Waters and out of bounds. Offensive line, big part of that play. Four passes, six runs on first down. Paul Hackett calls the play. Running play to Richard. Well, he almost got it caught in a switch of hands with the football as he came to the near sideline at the 34th, the Ron Ellis. The right inside backer pushed him out. Three thirty-seven left until halftime. 14-9. Neyland's ball club leading in this one. The last game that they lost on this turf right here two years ago to this ball club. Nobody scored a touchdown. 6-3 final. Richards puts a head down. He's in the vicinity of the 30 after Gray hitting. And Pitt will look at a third and they need the 26. 
middle guard, Gray, Jim Gray, is becoming the key to this game. They move him around. He'll take the gap. He'll sit on the center. It seems that they're trying to guess which way he's going to go. If he goes the wrong way or they can block him, their running game works. Crowd is coming to their feet for this third down play. Four seconds on the 25 second clock. Van Pelt gets the pass away. Incomplete. He was looking for Sykes. A marker is down across the way, and Kevin, it was hard to tell. The clock was either at one or at zero as the ball was snapped. I don't know if they were set either, Ron. I don't know if they set for a count. I think he just snapped the ball. You're exactly right. Illegal procedure against the Pitt Panthers. Now that was the play. And I see Walker was in the backfield. Walker is a running back but they knew they weren't going to run. He's only had two receptions this year, number 29, Walker. What they were trying to do is throw that drag to the tight end, but when they went with the single setback, West Virginia came with the blitz. They didn't have enough people to cover it, and they got right to Van Pelt. They have an illegal formation, offense, penalty decline, fourth down. So only six men on the line of scrimmage for the Pitt Panthers as they hurried up there with the game clock, or the play clock, I should say, running down. I think they were going to shift out, and they didn't have time to shift. So Pitt does not have the kicking unit on the field. Kevin, they're going to try to draw them offside? We saw that yes. in that opening ball game this year of a and and LSU. You're playing defense. You have to sit back a little and watch the ball. Fourth down, they're going to go for it. Van Pelt looking back over the middle for Tootin, and it is intercepted by Waters. Knocked out of bounds just across the 30-yard line. And a marker comes in late further down the field. Personal foul against the Panthers. Just the second interception of his career for Van Pelt. First came in the second half against Pittsburgh. This is a timing pattern. He's floating this thing out, hoping his receiver can get to the dead spot before the defensive back. But tootin has got that bad leg, and Waters reads it perfectly, gets in front of him, and picks it off. A floater to the dead spot. See, see Waters just happened to get there. Quick. Great catch, great catch. So this Mountaineer defense comes through again. With still another interception. That's three. Draw play. Garrett Ford tripped up at the line of scrimmage. He will get nothing in the play as Siragusa grabbed him by the ankle and knocked him down. Van Pelt trying to reach out and touch someone there. And someone he's trying to touch is Paul Hackett. What's going on, Paul? Settle down. Don't worry. It's a five-point game. we got a whole half to go. Two interceptions, I beg your pardon. Five of 15 for 104 yards for Van Pelt. That was my mistake. He did have an early one. Harris, he is going for it all. In the end zone, incomplete. James Jett who caught the 59-yard touchdown pass on the third play from scrimmage to open this one tonight is the man they were looking for. Kevin, yeah, I watched him do that in the warm-ups tonight and from just about this spot. And Major drops back there and throws the ball about 60 yards of the air, 60 to 65. He has a gun, but he's no drop back quarterback. I don't think there's anybody in the country that would expect him. If he had to sit in the pocket, he would not complete as, as many percentage passes as he does. Mountaineers need the 43 of Pitt. Under some big pressure, and he is sacked. Way back at the 38-yard line, Mark Spindler again. And Hamilton, and they are taking over. The left side of the defensive line 
for Pitt is starting to put on the pressure. Here they are, and I'll tell you, this is an ugly sight if you're a quarterback. Look at this. No chance for Major Harrison. When he doesn't have a chance, your defense is coming. The punny do that on the field, and Pitt having to hustle their special teams on. In fact, they just got in a down set as Herzog booms this one to Alonzo Hampton. He calls for the fair catch down at the 17. Well, we talked off the top of the telecast tonight about the fact that the gentleman from West Virginia and being a, a very viable candidate. Here are the Heisman winners in the 80s. The highlights there, 1980, Hugh Green out of Pittsburgh. Outside linebacker picked up second place, the defensive best. He was a great player. The closest race was in 85 where Bo Jackson beat Chuck Long. Quarterback streak ended in 87 with Tim Brown of Notre Dame and the juniors who didn't come back, Herschel Walker and Barry Sanders. And Major Harris might be the first black quarterback ever to win the Heisman. He Redman on the year. draw play. Takes it out in the vicinity of the 30-yard line. The Ron Ellis will collar him. 76 seconds left. And now the two-minute drill. Major, they got his jersey put back on him. He's been sacked a couple of times tonight. If that just doesn't happen very often to him. Van Pelt. And he's just going to throw this one away. Sykes is the closest man to it. It was Turnbull who had a hold of it. You think he's in a good mood? Yeah. Oh, ho, ho. Ronaldo. That was a bad decision by Alex. Alex should have stopped and stepped up inside. The, the fellow that was blocking Turnbull was doing a good job, but he was blocking him outside, and Alex tried to run outside, ran right into it. And as he played well, well, a block point after, a block field goal, a fumble recovery, and a couple of hurries and sacks to go with that. Now 63 seconds until halftime. 70 yards away, the Panthers. Redmond again on the draw play. Will take it for a short three. And now a third down situation for Pitt. If I'm Pitt, I have to think about getting out of here trailing by five here in West Virginia. I don't know if I want to force this one. Not for another draw. Van Pelt throws it away again. And the bad thing about that right there is he stopped the clock for West Virginia. They got 31 ticks left on there. They get any kind of return. They got a little chain showing on the clock. Brian Greenfield will come out of punt. They haven't blocked any punts, but they blocked two place kicks, and they're capable. And they're coming after him. Wobbly spiral away from Fulton this time, and it takes a big West Virginia bounce. It's going to be down at the 42-yard line. Let's look at the scoring summary. Jet very early on, third play, 59-yard pass from Major Harris. Extra point was good. And in Pitt, Kerbin Richards on the eight-yard run. Extra point attempt was blocked. That made it 7-6. Then Rembert on the 62-yard Touchdown pass from Major Harris. Extra point good. 14 to 6 at the time. And it fit with Frazier's field goal. And that's how we stand right now. With 21 ticks showing on the clock. Harris back to throw. He wants Rimbert. Long. And he is there. Inside the five. That's the time on the clock that I was speaking of. If, if Van Pelt runs it down, West Virginia would not have had this opportunity. Let's take a break. 13 seconds left until halftime, and the Mountaineers threatening. Virginia first and goal on the four-yard line. Here's how they got there. 
Reggie Rembert, number 88. Alonzo Hampton took the outside away and gave him the post, then couldn't catch him. Major Harris put it on the money. Rembert falls on the four-yard line. So with 13 seconds to go, here's Major. No question about the strength of his arm and no safety in the middle. This is single coverage. No chance, Rembert. If he kept his feet, he would have been in. First and goal on the four, 13 seconds to go. Look at his numbers tonight. Four completions, just under 50 yards. Harris with the quick up pass. It is caught by Rembert. Carroll tries to make it 21 to 9. And he splits them. This is a pass that cannot be defended if it's perfect, and Major Harris will make it perfect. 6'6, six, six, Reggie Rember with Lewis Riddick just trying to stay with him. It's right in his chest for a touchdown, and that was lightning struck here in Morgantown. And it all happened with what? 22 seconds left until halftime. Hey, he's asking Bob, he says, what should I have done? I think what he was thinking, Alonzo, was thinking they were going to try to work it down the field, took the outside away from Reggie Rembert, who, if you're not familiar with West Virginia football, they say he may be the best ever here, junior college transfer, Reggie Rembert. Hampton took the outside away from this kid. He went to the post with no safety. And Major Harris, of course, made a beautiful throw, two beautiful throws. And they scored with 20 seconds to go. West Virginia made it work, didn't they? Did they ever? And you see they, they are checking over his left knee. Bob Carpenter coming up at halftime with the USF&G halftime report. Scott scores and highlights from around the country. We've already mentioned a couple of the upsets today as Duke knocked off Clemson. And the University of Georgia was surprised by South Carolina. Just a couple of the games that Bobby will have for you at halftime. Squib kick. Tossed back to Richard. And he is nailed just shy of the 30-yard line by Grant. Action continues, but no more. As the horn sounds, as they head to the locker room with our score. West Virginia 21 and Pitt 9. Now let's go to Bob Carpenter with an update on the other day's happenings. All right, Ron Franklin, and there have been some unbelievable happenings today in college football. Welcome to the USF&G Halftime Report. Lee Corso and from Knoxville. Bino Cook join us shortly. We'll have scores and highlights a little bit later as we look at some of the upsets. Right now, let's update some late games taking place in the top 25. In Little Rock, the Arkansas Razorbacks have a couple of touchdown runs from James Rouse and lead UTEP 20 to 7 in the second quarter of play. Andre Ware, 413 yards in the air. Houston dismantles Temple tonight by a score of 65-7. They had 609 yards in total offense in that game. NC State playing against the old North Carolina coach Dick Crum and leading 26-22 over tough hanging Kent State in the third quarter there. Arizona beat Oregon last year. Oregon trying to return the favor. A possible upset here. 13-10 in the fourth quarter out west. And Texas A&M is all over Southern Miss. They led 17-0. Now it's 24-14 in the third quarter of play. Big, big upsets today, even yes, in the top 25. Highlights and scores coming up next on the USF&G Halftime Report. Okay, thanks, Bob. There you see the score, 21-9, to 9, as the Mountaineers are leading this one, and they struck like lightning right at the end of the first half and put a very large margin out in front of Pitt. We talked off the top of the telecast this evening 
about the quarterbacks and the comparisons. And as we look at them right now, I'm afraid they're not too pretty. Well, we said that they would get pressure on Van Pelt, and I think as you look at Alex Van Pelt's numbers on the bottom there, what you see are freshman numbers. The kid's been under a lot of pressure. Not only did he grow up 20 minutes from here, uh, but he's got a lot of guys climbing on him. Major Harris has been a big play guy. He's not passing for a high percentage, but he's had some big plays. Kevin, also, as we've seen in the first 30 minutes of play, there have been some breakdowns in the pit secondary, and some big plays have resulted from that. Now, this film's going to look like uh, Friday the 13th, part 22 or something here. Here's the third play of the game. James Jett, Robert Bradley, the corner, is going to get a little too close to Jett. I mean, he's, he's named Jett. What do you expect from him, right? He runs into Bradley. Gets in front, but mistimes the leap. Jet gets the ball from Harris, and they go 59 yards. Now, you call that a breakdown or what? It, it could have been something less than a touchdown. And now this is the option look. Five-yard pass out here to Rembert. Now, Steve Israel, perfect position. He misses that tackle. That's a tough film to watch. And Rembert, who may be the fastest player on the team, he's now on the track team, and he's headed in there. Nobody's going to get him. Well, that was really bad, OK? But then we get to the end of the half. 20 seconds to go in the half, approximately. Here's Rembert again. Now, Alonzo Hampton, number three, looked like he thought he had safety help. He gave him the post, said, thank you very much. Major Harris laid it right on the numbers. They go to the four-yard line. Moments later, they scored. Those are not pretty pictures, and you can bet there was some talk about that in the locker room at halftime. How much does that change Pitt's strategy as far as what they're able to do as far as being down by five points and now being down by 12 points? Pitt was controlling the game with their defensive line. I think what you're going to see is they're going to go to pressure defense. That's what they've always been under Mike Gottfried, and they're going to go right after him. Mike has always been a pressure defense guy. I think you'll see Pitt use that defensive line and come right after West Virginia. So the Mountaineers leading by 12 as we open this third period. Carroll with the kickoff deep into the end zone again. And Israel will go down on one knee. Take a look at the first half stats. In total yardage, you might look at that and say, wow, good close ball game. But average play on first down is huge plus the fact the big plays that West Virginia has been able to come up with major in the first half averaging on every completion around 45 yards per toss about we just saw three of the five completions and you see how it was as much a breakdown of the pit secondary as the passing and running which was excellent of West Virginia first down critical for Pitt here. the throw dumps it out of the backfield this is Redmond he'll go for three tough yards and then gets hammered down by Proctor so Pitt with a pass on first down to open the second half the Pitt offense needs to dictate to the West Virginia defense it didn't happen in the first two quarters if it doesn't happen here the game will be lost Richards left side tripped up at the line of scrimmage maybe a gain of a couple on the play it's got to be a third down and they'll need in the vicinity of four yards as Fox and Brockman come over to make the hit for West Virginia number 61 Mike Fox the strength of the team again is the strength there's Getz trying to block him gets his hands up that's just just fantastic position he controlled the offensive block was able to get rid of it when he saw the ball carrier he just can't do any better defensively Kevin Richards now 17 carries 103 yards in the game and the crowd again really making noise on the third down situation Dumps it off wide open over the middle as Redmond at the 40 puts the head down and he will have the first down as Waters is the man who put the headgear down. And it was Ronaldo Turnbull who was coming from the backside with pressure on Van Pelt. Turnbull is a guy we talked about at the head of the show, an incredible athlete, 6'5, 245. That's why you haven't seen the tight end. They're trying to block him with him, but Turnbull gets rid of Sykes. Says, Welcome to college football, Alex, and welcome home. The Grafton Gipper, Redmond, a key in this offense, if you ask me, in the second half. Richards squeezes through the hole, has five and now ten. And a first down for Pitt as they come out running the football. 
One pass and now on the ground. That's good for 12. Kevin Richards, only a sophomore. Laporte, Texas. Great story because of Kervin Richards, Alex Van Pelt is here. They were recruiting Kervin Richards when they found out about Alex Van Pelt down in San Antonio, and that's how he wound up at pick. Richards again. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. He'll be knocked down for no gain, and it's Ronaldo Turnbull again. Also, Mike Fox was the man who won't get much credit, but he had submarined and had stuffed up the hole. Well, let's give him some credit here. Number 61. Again, holding up Getz. As you can see, Kervin runs right into Getz. You cannot run at strength. When I told you earlier, these guys bench press over 400 pounds. They're bench pressing the offensive line. Pelt. Over the middle, Redmond left alone, breaks it clear for a moment. He'll have the first down at the 33. Waters came over and reacted, and Mr. Van Pelt applauds the efforts of his redshirt freshman son. The thing about Redmond that will make him so tough, he's a halfback in a fullback position, and that again is Paul Hackett. He has two halfbacks back there, both of them leaving the game now, Richards and Redmond, but he gets lost. The fullback is tough to cover because it's usually a strong safety or an inside linebacker, and he can get lost in the secondary easily. Short drop this time. Quick out pass goes to Tootin. Turns it upfield. He's going to step out of bounds just one yard shy of the first down. Waters pushes him out of bounds. Tootin gutsy effort tonight. Playing on the injured leg. The speed comes from your calves, your buttocks, and your stomach. When you hurt any one of them, if you're a wide receiver, you've got a problem to hurt his calf. Tell you somebody else that's given a gutsy effort tonight is Daryl Whitmore, who has severely injured a leg that has what his foot has a plate in. Number 11, he's out there. Straight ahead, this is Derek Lewis. Derek is down in the vicinity of the 20-yard line. That will be enough for the first down. Well, we said they were loving and avid fans. Take a look at them. We have set a new record tonight, 68,938. A new high. Does that include you and I? <laughs> no. <laughs> there's, a, there's only 1.9 million people in this entire state, so what's that? That's uh, 3, 5, 6 percent. That's a lot of people. A lot of ears. That's twice as many ears as people. Oh, they are magnificent fans, and they come from all over the state to see their Mountaineers play. Richard tries to get outside, breaks one tackle, but again, it's Turnbull from the inside, and you have to wonder, just like we commented that opening weekend on Aaron Wallace for Texas A&M, is there more than 187 on the field for West Virginia? I told you about this guy. I mean, he shouldn't be a surprise. Comes from St. Thomas. Didn't really play much high school football. In fact, he played on an eight-man team, and the basketball coach, Bob Smith, former basketball coach in West Virginia, was over there looking for basketball players. He discovered Ronaldo, and here he is, bouncing pitch offense around, dribbling them. Inside blitz is on. Van Pelt over the middle to his tight end. Seaman loses the ball, and West Virginia has it inside the 10. Preston Waters on the recovery. Oh, to the Mountaineers dodge a bullet there. Eric Seaman had only caught two passes this year. He had really not played much in this game. A little bit cold. Van Pelt finds him. It's been open all night, but look at the hit. Hat, shoulder, right on the ball. Seaman can't hold it. That was Plochter. Waters comes in. Good team defense for West Virginia. If you're going to let him catch it, make him pay. And the Mountaineers did just that. Big opening over the middle. I beg your pardon, Rico Tyler. And he takes it out to the 20-yard line. And a first down, West Virginia.
the acoustical wizard of the Mountaineers. He's the head of their rap productions. He can sing and he can also dance, as you saw him dance through the middle of two pretty good tackles for he a big also, game. He also is from Pittsburgh and said has always been a huge Pitt fan. Harris throws the pass complete in the flat again. It's Tyler. And his knee went down at the 20 yard line. So it'll be no game. I think most people nationally probably have not seen West Virginia, but for the Fiesta Bowl. There have been some games, but probably haven't noticed them. Since Don Nealon has gotten here, this program has gotten stronger and stronger. And I know just being in the weight room, and this is one of the finest programs in the nation. 11-0 last year, a loss to Notre Dame, and I mentioned, I think, earlier, seven players hurt in that game early, and they go down for the national championship, but they're right back at it this year. Harris will scramble up the middle. He'll take it for five, maybe six, around the 26-yard line. McDonald and Gobb finally corral him. Well, you want to get Don Nealon strung out on something other than his football team, get him started talking about these West Virginia fans and their devotion to this program. You know, and he made one really great point. He said, we got a lot of people in the state that work hard, not for affluence, but to keep a job. We've had hard times up here. And he said, this is one thing that they really have found solace in. Harris again into the flat, throws it complete to Rimbert. Major Harris up at the 36 yard line. That'll be plenty enough for the first down as Bradley pushes him out. And here's that pressure defense from Pittsburgh again. Now here's the blitz. There's your middle linebacker, Gobb, and they're going to come. Major, not even noticing. He's going to get it out here to his man, Rembert. And Rembert's done some damage tonight. Bradley, a nice tackle on a tough receiver. But they've got it going. You've got the experienced quarterback right there, the Heisman candidate, and maybe the best ever receiver in West Virginia sitting out there to catch his passes. Boy, that's, that is murder on an offensive lineman. One guy moves and everybody else gets punished. And you could see Jeff Price, the center, just come like he was jettisoned back off the ball, Dead turning to backward flip. Go against that defensive line, too. Those guys, they're hungry enough without giving them a shot, and we shot. Extremely big series if you're a Pitt fan. Panthers just drove the ball down the field very convincingly, only to turn it over inside the 10. Harris drills it on a rope. It's Greg Dykes out over the 45, and that will be enough for the first down at the 47. 17 yards on the completion before Ricardo McDonald put a stopper on him. go down a running play up the middle goes to Tyler and I'm not sure if Pitt got back uh, on sides well, they, didn't, they didn't try to get back that that was very odd the guy Hamilton, on the outside. yeah he just he stopped oh. and it's gonna cost him five yards this is a really really uh, uh, it's a mental error by Pitt if you get caught in the in the zone and you haven't made contact you can get back see the spinner gets back well, look at Hamilton 92, he just stands there, and that's why they call it. There was no penalty until they snapped the ball. So a first and five. Five penalties, 44 yards against uh, Pitt. Draw play, breaks it open. Eugene Napoleon down the near side, pushed out of bounds at the 27. The beauty of this offense is they've done enough things to be able to run right up the middle. They get everybody turned. Now here's Gobb, the middle linebacker. 
gets caught in a block, overruns it, which you can't do as a middle linebacker, and Napoleon, always looking for the cutback, does just that. Riddick finally runs him down. Tom Sims, the guy who was blocked on the line of scrimmage. Harris rolls the pocket to the right, looking for Rimbert over the middle. He was open for a moment. Now he's going to reverse it. Gets it away. It is intercepted at the seven-yard line by Bradley. At the 30, it is pushed out of bounds across the way. Second interception of the night by Major Harris, and a marker is down on the play. West Virginia is signaling that is it, it is against Pitt, but let's see if it was before or after the interception. the signal face mask. Major Harris had come to the sideline. Defense is still on the field. Face mask. 15 yard penalty before the ball was thrown. Previous spot foul. First down. A defensive face mask penalty on who? There was no ball carrier except for Harris. It had to happen on the line of scrimmage, you would think. Boy, that's a killer there. That's a tough call. Bullshit call right there. Tough call. Keith Hamilton, the guy they're going to call it on, number 92. A hand in the face on Tyler. So now the discussion continues as Pitt has called a timeout and the entire defense goes to the far side of the field. 21-9, West Virginia leads. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Pittsburgh versus West Virginia, is brought to you by Jeep. There's only one Jeep. By New Methanol Drive, one taste, and you'll drink it dry. And by Nike, who reminds you to just do it. Ron Franklin along with Kevin Kiley and Chris Fowler. Morgantown, West Virginia. Pitt had just come up with an interception, they thought, by Robert Bradley at a 15-yard penalty. Face mask called against Keith Hamilton. Now from the 11, West Virginia. Tyler runs into the teeth of that defense. Curtis Bray stands him up at the line of scrimmage. Gain of one. could see Don Nealon sending in a play by Eugene Napoleon. Eugene is a senior out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Had an ankle injury early on. Had a great game last week against Louisville. Dumps it out of the flat. That's Tyler, and he will be knocked out of bounds at the three-yard line. Curtis Bray defensively making the play. Very, very tough to defend this guy. You have to defend all 11 here. You have that extra back. Major Harris, little fake. You have to honor that. Tyler, the fullback of all people, loose. And Pittsburgh, not a bad job. That pass a little bit short. Two guys able to get over there and drive him out. But still, they're close. Third down. They need the one. Napoleon hit by Mark Spindler at the line of scrimmage and driven back. He is not going to have the first down. They'll mark it just outside the two. Kevin, to kick the field goal. You're up 24-9, which is 15. I kick it. And West Virginia would like to talk it over some more. So as Major Harris comes to the sideline, the wheels are turning. 
We'll be right back. Denied. West Virginia leads. Let's go down to the field, and here's Chris Fowler. Fellas, Don Nealon talked to Major Harris during the timeouts. Ask him what he thought. Major was not real emphatic about whether or not they could get the first down, so he sent out the field goal team. He wanted Napoleon to run harder on that last play, though. Back up to you. Well, that's interesting. He asked, he asked Major Harris. 20-yard attempt by Brad Carroll. I would have done it. I would have done it without talking to Major, but I think that's probably what makes Don Neal such a great coach. And I have to comment that was a tremendous drive after the turnover by Pitt because Pitt's offense really rolling, and then they kept them off the field and pulled them off. Even though they just got three points, it really was a brilliant drive by West Virginia. Well, as it turns out, if you look at the turnover, potentially a 10-point swing in the ball game. Well, ESPN's College Football Saturday kicks off next week, 11.30 a.m. That's game day with Bob Carpenter, Bino Cook, and Lee Corso, and they'll preview what is coming up in college football. Then at 12.30, Ivy League, Pennsylvania taking on Columbia. Then 7 o'clock, Kevin and I will be in Knoxville, Tennessee. Boy, the Vols won a huge win today over Auburn. They will take on the University of Georgia. Then at 10.30, it's out to the Pac-10, Arizona State will take on the Bruins of UCLA all next Saturday right here on ESPN. Who are those two wild-looking guys behind Bobby Carpenter? Vino and Corso. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Vino never looked so good as he looked in that picture. Major Harris, what a night he has had. You can see him standing on the sideline just a moment ago. His ball club right now leading by 15 points over a pit team that we saw last week with extremely good football team. Israel and Richard are back deep. Carroll's kick will come down to Israel at the two. talk about clutch performances that last drive by the Mountaineers of West Virginia 91 yards using up just over four minutes and Carroll with the field goal 10 plays really the first legitimate drive of the night the other plays were big play touchdown Major Harris now 10 of 23 two interceptions 165 yards for a couple, maybe three off the right side. The Ron Ellis from the middle linebacking spot comes over to corral him. Pitt really needs to forget where they are. They're in West Virginia. They need to develop the kind of momentum they had when they came out in the second half and get this drive rolling. Redman looks like he's hurt. Looks like his shoulder, either that or his right arm. It was not an overly enthusiastic clap there, was it? No. Van Pelt, long over the middle, it is intercepted, Waters! At the 20 and steps out of bounds inside at the 19. three-deep zone and Van Pelt's gonna throw it short into a three-deep zone the protection is there the pattern is never open and this is a balloon folks as your coverage right there even without waters he was covered Mountaineers leading by 15 and looking for some more Garrett Ford 
Lewis Riddick comes up from his free safety Stop position to finally make the stop. It's going to be a gain of close to five. You ask a lot from your defense when you do things like that. Very difficult. Just under six minutes to play. Third period. Record crowd here in Morgantown. Quick inside handoff to the fullback, Tyler. Knifed in his way inside the 10. It'll be first and goal, Mountaineers. Pitt's tired, and West Virginia is rolling at home in front of these fans that truly do love them. Great job by the offensive line, Parker and Price and Wolfley and that man, Don Nealon. He's got him ready, and he's got him rolling. Pretty good collision down at the five-yard line as Richard Allen came up and made the hit on Ford. They got a super one-two punch, though, in those tailbacks with Napoleon and Ford. But they're so totally different physically. Ford, the big boom back at almost 230 pounds. Well, Nalen's doing the 800-pound gorilla on pit now. He's got he's switching fullbacks and the, the big backs and just blocking straight ahead. Ford again. Tries to spin off the tackle and almost did. He's down close to the three as Richard Allen and Cardi Smith grab him. In fact, they're still grabbing him. <laughs> Gonna be third down and goal for West Virginia. And in case you missed the top of the telecast tonight, West Virginia in their third play went for a 59 yard touchdown pass to Jet. Pitt came right back, and they scored on their opening possession with Richards taking it in. But since then, it has been the Mountaineers for the most part. Here they come. Harris wide open as Tyler Hill walk in. Celebration just beginning here in West Virginia as Carroll attempting the extra point. A game of mistakes. Confusion defensively for Pitt. They didn't know what they wanted to do. They came with an inside blitz, but they forgot to cover the fullback. Touchdown. Here it is from inside. You see the backers coming. Everybody's coming. McDonald, the outside backer, blocked inside. Spindler, no chance. Major Harris with the experience and Tyler wide open and another touchdown for West Virginia. So with 4.06 left in the third period, West Virginia 31 to 9. This fall, Michael Jordan moves. Magic Johnson moves. Larry Bird moves. This fall, the NBA moves from TBS to a new cable channel. TNT. Every NBA star, every NBA team, twice each week, all season long. Go where the NBA moves. TNT. My father always used to tell me, Bobby, I want you to have all the advantages I never had. And I want you to do all the things I never did. The problem was, one of the things he never did was to take care of his high blood pressure. That's why I'm taking care of mine. Maybe that's why I'm around to enjoy my beautiful grandson. <laughs> do what your doctor says. Treat your high blood pressure and live to do the things they never did.
winning has become quite routine for Jeep Comanche, whether it's under these conditions or any other. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley, along with the Chris Fowler back in Morgantown. 31 to 9, the Mountaineers on top, and you see just over four to play in the third period. Some major accomplishments in this one tonight. Guy is looking for an increase in rank. Harris with his fourth touchdown pass, and Carroll will kick it off for West Virginia. Israel at the three. Looking for a lane up the far sideline. The fumble play was dead as Drumgoul makes the stop. We talked about Major Harris at the head of the show. Career plays, career TDs. That was his average tonight. The Major became a general, a four-star general. Four touchdowns every seven times he touched the ball. That's a career high. Four touchdown passes for Major Harris, who will only be on TV, we know at least one more time, and that'll be against Syracuse on Thanksgiving. We'll have him. But when you talk about the Heisman run, you have to talk now about Major Harris. Well, as you mentioned, it's career high with four. And that is Israel, the return man substitute cornerback for the Pitt Panthers who has been injured on the play you can see they are looking at his right knee boy he must be thinking what a week I'm having he must be thinking he's had a rough night number 11 tough kid coming in there's the hit let's watch the knee hit the turf Immediately was hurt. I didn't see any twisting motion. Could also have been the other knee coming down inside and uh, stung it just a little bit. ESPN Speed World kicks into high gear tomorrow afternoon. We're going to present the NASCAR Holly Farms 400 from uh, North Carolina. Bob Jenkins and our racing crew. That's 1 o'clock Eastern time as the race for the Winston Cup winds down. Dale Earnhardt, Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, and Darrell Waltrip still battling it out for the NASCAR's prize jewel. One o'clock Eastern tomorrow. The wave is going on. And Mike Gottfried is hoping that he doesn't get caught under any more of the undertow, but it has been tough going so far. 31 to 9 over his Pitt Panthers. Back in the pocket, gets it off the Redmond as fullback, out to the 32-yard line. It'll be enough for the first down as Leroy Axum is there defensively for the Mountaineers. Three substitutes in that West Virginia secondary. I mentioned Axum just a moment ago. He plays behind Fulton. Drum goal is in at the uh, strong safety. Sam Wilson is coming at cornerback. He's over on the right side. Into the flat. It is complete. That's Kerbin Richards out of the backfield. Good for about five yards. If you're wondering what Pitt needs to do here, they need to score probably before the fourth quarter. Three scores. And two-point conversions would give them the lead. They need one two-point conversion and two seven-point touchdowns, if you will, single conversions to tie the game. This drive is extremely important. Van Pelt. Lots of time, and he is intercepted by Proctor. Looks for a block, but he's going to be tackled inside the 35. Ben Pelt's father looks on. That's four interceptions that the youngster has thrown tonight. Ducks in a barrel. This is a, every bit of a prevent defense. The short zone. 
He never sees it. Proctor playing short, watching the quarterback, just drifting with the ball. He's able to pick it up. Van Pelt's getting a lesson tonight, and he'll be better for it. Major Harris reverses on the pivot, gets the pass out to Eugene Napoleon, and he'll be stopped for a three-yard loss. Take a look at some other scores. Action going on around the country. Texas in the third period, leading Penn State. Arkansas, big over UTEP there in the third. North Carolina State, that's now final by 20 over Kent State. And Oregon has defeated Arizona 16 to 10. NC State looking a lot like the favorite in the Atlantic Coast Conference now with Clemson being upset. Wants to throw, he's going to tuck it and run. Loses the balance and now gets hammered down as Crossman comes up from that safety spot to make the tackle. Boy, look at his pants leg. You think it hasn't been rough on the field tonight? Watch, watch Major Harris. Watch the fake he makes. Some good blocking on this. They take the coverage, they take the contain down. You can see, watch this fake. Now, who would believe, who would believe he was going to throw that thing? It was like a threat. Third down. <laughs> Harris stands in the pocket, throws it back to the far sideline. It is complete, but out of bounds. Greg Dykes on the receiving end. Dykes is the unsung hero on this ball club. Very rangy, not as tall as Rimper, but he's 6'3", and he can run pretty doggone well. He ran too well on this. He never tried to stop. He just kept his stride. A great catch. Does he hit drag that toe? See if he drags that toe and stops it. Maybe the defense would have caught up. Speaking of forgotten people, Herzog has not had to do much in this ball game, and he comes on to punt with the fourth down to 13. Nice job by the pit defense on that play. Kick for the far sideline, and it'll go into the end zone for the touchdown. 37 yards on the punt, and let's go down to Chris Fowler on the sideline. Okay, Ron, Stephen Israel pits kickoff for Turner, has a sprained right knee. He did it on the last return. A lot of pain, and he's not going to be able to return, fellas. Thanks, Chris. You can see the youngster packed in ice there. Happened on that last kick return. I'm going to give you a short summation of what has happened in the third period. Pitt took the football and drove it down inside the 10 yard line fumbled on the completed pass to Seaman and here came West Virginia they have scored 10 unanswered and that's the way we stand right now 31 to 9 Mountaineers on top 139 to play third. Walker cracked down hard just across the 20 by Turnbull again. Walker, kind of the forgotten back, the forgotten man in the offense for Pittsburgh. A very, very fine tailback who's been beaten out by Kirvin Richards. You can see why early in the game, Richards running all over the place. But this fella, early last year, was running and running hard and for big yardage when he was injured. And he's been out, hasn't been able to get back. This time it's Derek Lewis. And he will be stopped for no gain. It's going to be third and ten. This time Scott Summits steps up into the hole. Tough to run a, a fullback across the formation. We saw him against Syracuse. He was very strong directly at the line, straight up and down running. They ran him on a little counter action across the formation. He didn't have a chance. <laughs> You could see those figures on third down, just the reverse of what they did last week. Van Pelt over the middle, complete, out to the 40 to Henry Tootin. Sam Wilson defensively. Well, how about Henry Tootin tonight? Injured his knee early in the game. He's still out there running crossing patterns of all things. A 
12 receptions for 225 yards. Could have been to this one tonight. Walker, left side, out to the 45. Number 29. Chris Harry. Adam Walker, Harry. And with that, the end of the third period. And they're standing here in Morgantown as we head to the final 15. West Virginia leading big. Beer was brought over on the Mayflower and shared on the first Thanksgiving. Enjoyed by Puritans and pirates, it's figured prominently throughout our nation's history. Our founding fathers thought highly of beer. In fact, the Continental Congress made it a part of every American soldier's daily ration. Our first president had his own private recipe. Over the next two centuries, brewing grew with the country, earning recognition as an important American industry. Today, it's served on the tables of nearly two-thirds of our country's families and enjoyed by 80 million Americans every year. And from the very start, it's always been meant for responsible adults. Beer, it's a good part of the good life. A message from Anheuser-Busch. shape our future, we invite you to learn the technology of tomorrow while you serve your country in the Navy of today. Mark and Rennie and little Lindsay are a young family just starting out. They don't have a lot of money for life insurance. I'm their State Farm agent, Gaylord Mooseman. Instead of giving Mark and Rennie a big life insurance sales talk, I did a lot of listening. And we came up with a plan that's going to work for their budget and little Lindsay's future, too. State Farm agents are good listeners because we want you to have life insurance you can live with. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In 1961, the fiberglass pole replaced the aluminum pole and broke the world record by four feet. In 68, the box construction's key resulted in a record number of gold medals. Since 84, the disc wheel has broken virtually every time trial record. Now Reebok has developed the energy return system of high trail tubes that help propel the athlete forward. Who knows what records will fall next? Fourth period, 31 to 9, West Virginia on top. Help. Fire sideline has it complete to Reggie Williams. Axum ran him out of bounds. Give yeah, a time he could see Turnbull coming up on the line of scrimmage with that slot formation to the near side. That was the automatic blitz if the back goes out of the pattern, right? Yeah, well, what he did was, yeah, he did. He showed blitz, showed tight, and then he went back to that short zone, and they've been killing Van Pelt with that all night because I think. Alex sees the, the, the guy come up on the line and thinks the short zone's open. Big pressure again. Pass incomplete. Down at the 40. The storyline in this one. Major Harris with some major plays. Four touchdowns. That's a career high for him. You see the numbers on Ben Pelt and six pit turnovers. If you're a Pittsburgh fan, it looks like an Edgar Allan Poe novel. Walker falls down trying to make the quick cut back toward the sideline. Warren Suber is the closest man in the area. Well, that's twice he's fallen down now in the last two series. Mike Gottfried has to be saying, well, what could possibly go wrong that has not gone wrong in this game? <laughs> Mike 
comes Rembert. Van Pelt delivers the ball and it is complete. Just inside the 30 yard line to Baron Jackson. And that will be enough for the pit first down. I meant Turnbull. I think I said Renbert. Number 87 got down to three point stance. Good blocking job. See him there, 87 right of your screen. They held him out. And this is what we saw from Alex last week. This is a rocket shot right in the middle of the West Virginia defense. Nice job by the freshman. Good blocking up front for Pitt. Unloads it to his running back, Derek Lewis. And boy, there are lots of blue jerseys around the football. Has been that way all night as we take a look at some other scores. Texas A&M defeats Southern Mississippi tonight in Handley in College Station, Florida. That's now a final shutting out Mississippi State. LSU, they're still in the third. Boy, a little frustration taking out there. And Oklahoma State, Wyoming having a real tough time. Paul Roach. Kind of getting a, having a tough year after two great ones. Ricky Turner goes left side, caught by a head high stab. That's uh, Chris Harry. Harry coming into tonight's ball game, 68 total tackles. Of course, he's our student of the game, a 3.6 average. That's my number in high school. Which should be above. <laughs> well, <laughs> what position you're probably oh, wondering. Every you, every position. 49 leads you. I, I thought you meant 3.6. <laughs> yeah. On a scale of 100. Ricky Turner, and he will not have it. Jim Gray, the nose guard, steps up to corral him, and it's fourth down for the Pitt Panthers now, is there any doubt this is four down third to gray number 98 you're looking at him has played one whale of a game sideline to sideline and tough in the middle give me five he says you deserve five give him ten the crowd will let you know fourth down for Pitt, and they need the 20. Complete to Sykes, the tight end for the first down. And Sykes has injured himself on the reception. That's the way it's gone tonight for Pitt. That was great defense by West Virginia. They were almost there. Now you have to figure, makes it to Kerman. You got to figure that's going to hold some people. It holds the inside backers. And look at this coverage. Woo. Oh, Brockman, he almost got there. Looks like an ankle injury to Sykes. From the 15. Movement on the left side. It'll be no play as the left tackle came out of his stance before the snap. And if you're an offensive lineman. What I started to say if you're an offensive lineman and you're down 31 to 9. Dead ball foul. I'll start. Offense. Repeat first down. They got their ears laid back, so you want to get in that stance as quickly as you can. And Scott Miller, there he is. And particularly going up against that guy, Mr. Turnbull. Oh, he's a load. Draw to Redmond. He'll take it to the 17. You'll get three of them back, and again, it's Turnbull. Big disappointment for the Pittsburgh people with the schedule they have going. Again, you got to remember, they have Miami, Notre Dame, and Penn State left on this schedule. Notre Dame at South Bend, Miami at Pitt. And then Penn State comes in, I think, the last game of the year. That, too, in Pittsburgh. Van Pelt rolls the pocket, 
steps up and delivers in the end zone. Knocked away. Fine defensive play by Whitmore as Reggie Williams was open, and the youngster might have delivered it about a half beat too late. Very difficult. Look at the running room. He might have had a chance to run. He decides not to. Throws this thing pretty high. And Whitmore on the bad ankle. Got the plate in the ankle. Wasn't going to play, but he can play hard enough to get over there. Played the entire game. He, he deserves a lot of credit. We really haven't said a whole lot about Whitmore. Don Neelan said yesterday, didn't know if he would have him for tonight or not. And he has had it. Best defensive back they say ever to play here. Over the middle to Tootin, and that may be enough for the first down. It will be at the four and a half yard line. I'm going to tell you this. Henry Tootin, as far as I'm concerned, he gets my band aid player of the game here. Henry Tootin, a uh, little skinny old wide receiver playing on a bad calf. He's going to get walloped. Hello, but he's playing. And, and I'll tell you nothing, Alex Van Pelt. You're going to see this kid around for a few years because as bad as he's had this night, 6'0", 185 pounds, but as bad as Van Pelt's had tonight, four interceptions, he, when they're open, he hits them. Tootin now five catches, 107 yards. Oh, what a great game. Most of that coming after the injury. Right up the middle with the run down to the one is Redmond. The Ron Ellis back in the ball game at middle linebacker along with Scott Summits. You've seen a lot of number 66 tonight. They have shared the wealth on defense has West Virginia Turnbull Ellis Harry's been all over the field. Fox Summits Gray. Every play every down big for Pitt because of the time they need to get in right away. Play action, wants the tight end, lobs it to him, and it's almost intercepted. Oh, my goodness, Sam Wilson stayed at home, and that tells the story right there with Mike Godfrey. Well, it's just a short arm. This thing, very hard to tell who even has the ball. Van Pelt comes here. And, oh. Boy, I'll tell you, I don't know who was more surprised when he threw it, Van Pelt or the defender. Hubner is a man who was behind the defensive back. Pitt will use another timeout. Pitt calling the timeout. They need the score badly. Committees are by nature timid, based on the premise of safety in numbers, content to survive rather than take risks and move independently ahead. Independence, then, has always been the attitude at Porsche, to do not what is expected, but what we feel is right. In the beginning, I looked around and could not find quite the car I dreamed of, so I decided to build it myself. It is said, I believe, that so many creations today are just like all the rest. This is why Porsche must remain small and independent. Committees lead to creations that have no soul. This is why no Porsche will ever be created by a committee, but by a handful of people inside these walls who know what a Porsche is. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Pittsburgh versus West Virginia, is brought to you by your local authorized Porsche dealer. And by Tempstar Furnaces, you can rely on the star. And by Showtime. Showtime exclusives. Here you see them, there you don't. Ron Franklin along with Kevin Kiley. 
And Chris Fowler on the sidelines in Morgantown, West Virginia. Record crowd tonight in the situation. Third down and goal pick from the two. 17th play of this drive. Over the top, and it is Adam Walker for the touchdown. Mike's telling them to go for two. They have to go for two. No matter how many touchdowns they score, they might as well get it in. This, to me, is what they should have done on the previous play. Adam Walker or anybody just right over the top, as you said, Ron, gets good height, did not slip on that play and get in the end zone. An 18-play drive, nothing fancy for Pitt. And then they get the two, they're within 14. 31-15, our score, 9-0-9, left in the ball game. And Pitt is elected to keep the ball right in the middle of the field. Van Pelt's pass, incomplete, looking for Reggie Williams. Two-point conversion goes awry. 31-15. Just off Route 19 in St. Petersburg is a place where you can learn to ski the Alps and shoot the rapids all in the same building. At Bill Jackson Sporting Goods, you can practice everything from a stem Christie to an Eskimo roll. But if you go there, remember, bring your imagination and your visa card. Because Bill Jackson doesn't promise you son Moritz, and he doesn't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. It's feeding time for the beast in the basement again. And you know what that old furnace is going to do to your utility bills. Isn't this the year you should find out about the savings Tempstar's high efficiency can bring? Replace that thing in the basement with a high efficiency Tempstar furnace. Start the savings, not the beast. Sunday, you could try watching every NFL game, but there's a better way. Start with ESPN's Emmy Award winning NFL Game Day. Learn what to look for and why in the only hour long preview of the day's action. Later, NFL Primetime showcases every key play from every game. The shows the pros would watch if they weren't busy. NFL Game Day and NFL Primetime, Sundays on ESPN. Don't miss it. 11.30 in the morning, NFL Game Day. Award-winning NFL Game Day. 16 points, the margin as West Virginia leads. I wonder who in the state of West Virginia does not look for an onside kick or something out of the norm. Not me. One of the things with an alignment like this, you always wonder with a single back and nine people up tight, if a kick toward the sideline, something toward the hash, it's a long way to run. A tough kick. Very tough kick. Kicks it away. Jet is the deep safety man. He'll take it, retreating at the two. Brings it back to the 18-yard line, and it's Boykin on the stop as a late flag comes in. And look at the numbers on Major Harris tonight. Total offense, 251, a career-high four touchdowns. Well, we talked about keeping the Major in his foxhole. He's got into the... The other Army's mess hall here. He's been all over the place. When you total 200 yards, West Virginia has won now 11 straight if they win this game. Major Harris. One of the officials coming over to the near sideline to explain to Coach Nealon what happened on the play. Good ball foul. Personal foul. Return to half the distance to the goal. First down. All right, left side of the screen. Number 23 in the ear hole, and then the face mask. Both places off limits. Uh, 
was a big penalty. That was, uh, now it's a first and 20. Turnover here and a quick score, and it could get real, real tense here in uh, Morgantown. Running play is Garrett Ford. Going to be wrapped up. Ball is on the ground, and that ball got tipped ahead. It looks like Rico Tyler came up with the football. Boy, you were just bringing it out of your mouth of what would happen. And Tyler looks as though he injured either his shoulder or his arm. Well, I don't know what anybody else is thinking, but 8.40 to go in the game, down by 16 points. And here's Ford. It's a great hit. Oh, but Lorenzo Hampton, he's right there. Oh, Gobb had his hand on it. Let and it get away. <laughs> Alonzo Hampton, number three. Good hit there. Gobb had a shot at it. Every bounce has gone pretty much West Virginia's way here. They better be careful. Makes the run. Now the pressure comes. Throws back against the grain. It has Rembrandt complete. Up across the 25 at the 26-yard line. What a throw. What a throw. And this is outrageous behavior for anybody but maybe Major Harris. This guy's running to the sideline. His speed, they want a penalty here. That's what the boon is about. His speed is going to get him out of trouble here. He's being chased. And look at this throw. Got some, got some nerve. Got some nerve. We're throwing it to Rembert in the middle of the middle of the defense, running away from it. Mike Boykin, number 54, made the stop. I think part of the reaction also was to the spotting of the ball. Get the yards from the pocket. Three for ten on the run. Much better. Eugene Napoleon with the big breaker out of the 35 to the 36. He's the one that broke the back of the Louisville Cardinals last week. Same kind of run. He took at the distance. That's a good back. Let's go back and look at that graphic one more time. Major Harris, when he throws in the pocket, then when he throws on the run. This type of thing will make him a defensive back in the pros if he doesn't learn to throw from the pocket. But it sure makes him popular here in Morgantown. 30% and then close to 80%. Draw play. Napoleon, left guard, is not open. Neither is outside left. Ball is fumbled. Who's got it? Pittsburgh has recovered. Well, just what Kevin was talking about, you can't get sloppy. Dan Crossman makes the recovery. We still have 6.51 left in the ball game. But the defensive mentality changes in a game like this. You have nothing to lose, and as a running back, you're not fighting for extra yardage. You're trying to get first downs and lay down. Now here's Napoleon. I mean, he's doing the best he can, but and these guys want the ball, and here it is. Rolls right there to Riddick. Riddick doesn't get it. Somebody else gets in there ahead of Tyler. From the 39, Van Pelt. It is almost intercepted, and a flag comes in from the near sideline. Steve Grant is a man who had it in both mitts and just dropped it to the artificial turf. Chris Getz shaken up on the play as offensive holding flag against the Panthers. Alex Van Pelt has had a very difficult time tonight, and one of the reasons he's had a difficult time is I think he's glued in on receivers, and he's really not, he's not reading coverages. Last week against Syracuse, I think what they did was give him certain parts of the field to work on. Tonight, they've done the same thing, but fallen behind. There's a lot of guys in that secondary, and he's just not picking them up. Penn State has gone in front of the Longhorns down at Austin. They're in the fourth. TCU leading SMU. They're in the third. Tulane by seven over Iowa State. Eklund in the final 15 minutes. Minnesota over Indiana State by 30. Golden Gophers. Or by 20, I should say. Golden Gophers. 31-15 our score. You see the clock on the bottom right. Just over half of this fourth period having been played. Hey, Don Nealon not relaxing. He knows this game is not over by any stretch. Well, one of the things that, that he did at the first part of the week is some of the media saying, why are you downplaying this ball game as Getz is limping off the field out of his own power, which is a good sign. And he said, he told us yesterday, he said, I didn't want the hype to become bigger than life too early on. I didn't want this ball club peaking. 
Well, you don't have to give any victory talks when you're playing Pitt. Draw play to Richards. Gonna be spun around and tackled just inside the 40. Steve Grant. And that left inside linebacking spot is the man who dropped him to the turf. Roman Matus took Ronaldo Turnbull for a ride on that play. They let him rush upfield and pinned him back. And they were able to run up inside. Van Pelt after the play action. Drills it and almost intercepted by Waters. He almost got another one. Henry Tootin, I'll tell you, Henry, Henry, Gary Clark of the Redskins, I've been trying to think of who he reminds me of. This guy, he should have been a linebacker. I think he got cheated. He should have been about 6'5", 280. Look at this. He can't get it? Well, neither can you, buddy. It's the guy that's been hurt the whole game. Great play by Henry Tootin. It'll be third down. And for Pitt, they need the 29. Tight end, tight end. There he is on the crossing route at Seaman, and he breaks it off inside the 25, and he's down to the 22. 16 yards and a pit first down. All right, it's got to be quick because he's supposed to block somebody. He's going to come right to your screen. Van Pelt sees him, hot receiver. And it, it, this is the guy that didn't he fumble the ball earlier, didn't he? Yeah, he's the guy. He's got his hand on that ball, and he says, I'm going to the goal line. The heck with you guys. Good play. 6'4", sophomore, 245 pounds. And Pelt again finds Seaman. And he will take it inside the 15 and close to the first down at the 12. As Lawrence Drumgoole came over from that safety position. And this may bring out a measurement. Still lots of time left. 522 to play. Hit a little bit of a disadvantage. Sykes, the quicker tight end, was hurt early in the game. Seaman doesn't have the speed you can probably tell watching him run. This time the running play with Richards. To the nine. Richards now close to 130 yards in the ball game. Don't forget, coming up right after our game, it's the college football scoreboard. Bob Carpenter, Bino Cook and Lee Corso as they wrap up week number five in college football. Tough spot here for Van Pelt. He's a drop back quarterback. You don't have that option like West Virginia does of going to the sideline, running him out there, stretching the defense. Whatever he does, he's got to do it quick and throw it hard. Look in pass. It is caught by Tootin. Touchdown, Pitt. All right, three steps, quick and very, very hard. And where does he go? He goes to the, hits the man in the heart with the big heart, Henry Tootin. I'm a Henry Tootin fan right now, guys. I'm a Pitt fan, too. They're coming back. They didn't quit. Here you go. This is just, just perfect offense. Terrific defense. Perfect offense. Van Pelt hits him in the chest, knocked him over with it. That's good play. Quick and to the point. That was Sam Wilson on the cover. So with 441 left to play, Pitt will go for the two-point conversion. They're trailing by 10. Dropped by Redmond, wouldn't have scored anyway because Wilson is the man who put the lumber on it. Team defense, but the guy who made the play is the man who gets the pressure. Right there, that's Brock, but he made him throw it high, and when he threw it high, Wilson had time to come up and bang, he hit Redmond. But you got to give Brockman an assist on that. I mean, that's the type of guy you want on your team. Makes him throw those bloopers. There is a flag on the play in the left secondary in the end zone.
Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Both teams after the play. Penalties nullified. So there's the story with 441 left in the ball game. Mountaineers leading by 10. If you've been injured recently as a result of an auto accident, call the office of attorney Alan Carb, a member of the Pennsylvania and American Trial Lawyers Association. With over 20 years' experience in injury cases, Alan Carb can help you, even if your accident occurred while vacationing in another state. There's no obligation and absolutely no fee owed unless money is recovered. Don't delay. For a free evaluation, call attorney Alan Carb at 391-3639. Get the compensation you deserve. Call today, 391-3639. Is your business looking to increase its net profit? Then just follow the bouncing ball. If you manage a local business, get a jump on your competition. Call your cable operator and advertise during the NBA on TNT. It's feeding time for the beast in the basement again, and you know what that old furnace is going to do to your utility bills, but you don't have to let that monster upset your budget. Send for Tempstar's Home Comfort Guide. It's free consumer information about the savings you can obtain with a high-efficiency furnace. The Comfort Guide informs you so that you can make the right choice when the time comes to replace old equipment. Before you start that beast in your basement, start something that could save you money every month. The information is free, and so is the call. College Football Saturday, week number five, and we hope that you are enjoying it with us. So with four minutes, 41 seconds left on this clock, Van Horn tees it at the 35, and West Virginia in their let's look for the onside kick posture. This is guided missile time here. If you're on a kicking team, you become a guided missile. Bounces oh. to the ground, and Pitt has it oh. at the 44-yard line. Oh, what a great onside kick that was. Tough to handle. Ricky Turner has made the recovery. Oh, but the kick, it's a short hop. Let it go out of bounds. See, if you know, they tell you on onside kick return team, if you're not sure of it, let it go. Look at this thing bounce. It's just a short, that's a tough, tough play for a kid on a short hop, and Turner right there, great kick. Oh, great kick. 10-point ball game, and Pitt's offense comes back on the field. The West Virginia crowd comes out of their shoes. Alex Van Pelt on a draw play, and nothing doing for Ronald Redmond. 61, Mike Fox, another one there that has played an outstanding game for the Mountaineers tonight, puts an end to the trail at the 40. They lose four. It's a horse. What, 6'7", 288? Should have been Mike Horse, not Mike Fox. Henry Tipton inside the 40. Check it, it's Truett, number 80 rather than 81. What a pass, great pass. Good for 22 yards. Bach will stop with 4.09 to play. And Van Pelt oh, is going to no, have to. No, That's the last no. time out. Oh, my goodness. Freshman. No, no. They were bringing in the play for the bench, and signals were coming in. And as Kevin had just alluded to, the crowd was getting into it, and that is extremely costly. So a timeout called by Pitt. Just over four minutes to play on this one. We've been called the turnaround company of the century. 
We've come from a little fledgling New England company to national recognition with money in the bank on the verge of explosion. Peter Lyons gives very good business advice as a volunteer for the Boston Ballet over the last five years and as an agent for New York Life over the last 32 years. Well, it means that we can envision our dreams by having Peter around. New York Life, the company you keep. Mr. Ian McKenzie. I'm Angus McKenzie. The Yanks moved down the road. Today, with service to 175 countries. Oh, you'd be wanting Ian Alistair McKenzie. UPS delivers to nearly 4 billion people. Also for McKenzie. Aye. Aye. Including the extraordinary concentration of McKenzie's along the northeast coast of Scotland. Mr. Ian Alistair McKenzie. No trouble finding me, did you, lad? No trouble at all. UPS. We run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Nature's light, bathing fields of grain, enriching full fresh hops, giving life to sparkling streams, nourishing all the natural things that go into making Bud Light. The light beer that's beechwood aged for a clean, fresh taste that makes Bud Light the one light that outshines them all. a 10-point ball game. At the timeouts left, well, West Virginia has two. They don't really care how many they have, leading by 10. For Pitt, they have none. Kevin just said during the timeout, I have a feeling that, it wasn't that Van Pelt might have a list put in his <laughs> pocket of plays. Yeah, his arm, he's got like 20 plays on his arm here. To the improvement of the second half for the youngster, 201 yards. They try to set the screen, and they do. It's Redmond down the near side, cuts it back. He's inside the 20 and down to the 16-yard line. That's good for 21 yards. Now, what a job by Van Pelt on this play. He waited. He waited. Now, here's some maturity from a freshman. He waited for that play to develop and finally found Redmond when he cleared the defense. Terrific play. They got to get in. They got to get in quick. 351 left in the ball game. They've got 12 men in the field, don't they? Two tight ends, there are two tight ends, receivers. three wide receivers. They're trying to get Williams off the field. Running the time of the 25 second clock, just over 10. Look in pass incomplete, and they were looking for Hurd. That's the same pass play that they scored just a few moments ago on. Yeah, but they weren't running against the same defense. This nope. is not a, not a goal line defense. Let's go back to this screen pass with Redmond. Now this thing, West Virginia was all over this play. And what Van Pelt does, they smell it. They're sitting out here, you go wait, wait, and now Redmond clears. A clip right there on Harry helped the play. Redmond runs it into the 17th yard line. Good play by Van Pelt and Redmond. Pressure up the middle. Pass thrown complete, and that's Dave Moore at the 12-yard line. It'll be a gain of about five. And he was unable to get out of bounds, so the clock continues. Pitt quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Excuse me, Ron. Wide side here. A lot of room for Tootin over there. They're going to double him. They're going to double him. Look in, pass incomplete. Williams, the intended receiver, and it was Preston Waters who really took a shot at him. <laughs> so it is fourth down. The line of scrimmage will be the 12 yard line. They're going to kick it. And Pitt will go for the three points. On the 25 second clock, 10 down to 9. Ball is down, 29 yarder is up, and he is good. A marker is down at the 20, and it may be Preston Waters who came across 
and rough the kicker. Now, this means that an onside kick could come from the 50 yard line. Wow. Boy, what a comeback, huh? In Morgantown, Pitt, they never quit. You gotta give him credit. Give Mike credit, give him all. That's Bob Alicenti right next to him there with the glasses on, his defensive coordinator. Tremendous job by the Pittsburgh people. They've gained a lot. Win or lose, they've gained a lot. Maybe West Virginia has too. They thought they had this one at 31 9. I think there's a choice to be made here on a first down. Whether or not they're going to get a first down, personal fouls, an automatic first down, depending on when it happened, what the call is. Did they, is it roughing the kicker? Did he, did he, make, the, did he make the call on it? Yes, I think so. Well, there is a decision evidently to be made here. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense, automatic first down. Now they're going to go, and you go back for all those that like to second guess as you look at it again. Oh, 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 look at that. Oh, he's pushed into him. Let me ask you something. That old that that old thing. If you never take points off the board, this, this is a no-win call for Mike Godfrey unless he wins the game. There's no right call here. There's no way. There's there's absolutely no way to make the right call unless you win the game. Richards right up the middle. He'll score. We have a four-point ball game with just under three minutes to play. Hey, folks. Look at Redmond on this play. Look at the block. Hey, you want a backyard brawl? You're right. Redmond on Herring. Herring is down, and Richards is up and in. And we've got a brawl. Boy, do we have a brawl here. Frazier's extra point attempt right down Broadway. 31 to 28. There's one for you. They don't need an onside kick. They need their defense to stop him, and now they need a field goal to tie the game. This call on the roughing the kicker. Let's watch this thing again. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Of poor Waters, oh, where else is he going to go? <laughs> this is a great effort by Waters. What does he get a little here? Ugh. Get a little help for you. But the, call, the call is made. Ben Pelt, nothing to be ashamed of. He's a freshman. You expect him to make mistakes. He's paid plenty, but he's made up for them too. When they look at the films, it's going to be a defensive coverage problem that cost him this game. Well, I mentioned just a moment ago with 255 left, don't go away. Those people were. They were leaving the stadium. Now they're standing on the hill and watching, not from the vantage point they had inside the stadium for the last three hours, but now with a three-point ball game and still almost three minutes to play. Coach Nealon mops the brow. It doesn't matter if it's in the 40s. Well, I tell you, win or lose for him. It's going to be a bad night. Win or lose for Mike Gottfried, it's a bad night. I mean, this is the type of game a coach says, well, wait, we were ahead 31-9, to and Mike's going to say, well, we would have won it had we not done this. I mean, this has become a real tough night for both teams. A winner, obviously, will feel better in the morning. And you know what is at stake? Both of these ball clubs with perfect records, ranked number nine and number 10. First time in the history, the 82nd meeting, they've never come into a ball game with both of them ranked in the top 10. And I mentioned the trophy that sits in the offices down underneath the stadium. That's the Lambert Trophy for supremacy in the East. There's a lot at stake in this one tonight, and of course, big, big bowl money. Why wouldn't a tie be something? What happens then? I guess you go home, go on your way, huh? He'll kick it away, away from Jet. Now this is a live ball. He's got to field it. He does it the three. Across the 10, and he's out to the 12. That's a good decision. I think that's an excellent decision. Kick the ball deep. You've got a defense. They have a great defensive line. Come after him. Try to hold him. They have no timeouts. Pitt has no timeouts. It's all up to Major Harris here, as it has been most of the year. Let's see what he can do. Well, for Bob Pino and uh, Lee, 
They'll be coming up with the college football scoreboard immediately following the ball game. But we still have 251 left in this one. Remember, Pitt has no timeouts left. You're West Virginia. You can't play wide open offense. You got to squeeze the ball. Think about turning it over. Napoleon hit in the backfield, and he'll be knocked down for a loss. Keith Hamilton stepped across and hit him for a couple of yard loss. Also, Siragusa. All right, here they're talking it over. Here's Van Pelt with the pit offense. Interesting, the freshman down on one knee with the board drawing plays. What a senior he'll make in four years. Major Harris rolls the pocket, backside pressure, they force him out, and he will be tackled at the 17 by Dan Crossman. What a great play by Major Harris, stopping, taking the hit, and staying in bounds. Junior, now that is smart. Clock is running at 153 and now 152. The line of scrimmage will be the 17. And for West Virginia, they need the ball just across the 23 for the first down. I'm Don Nealon. I give the ball to Major Harris. I don't hand it off. I live and die with the guy. I let him run around back there. If he gets a first down, fine. If not, kick it away. It's got 11 men at the line of scrimmage. Pass is complete. That's Evans, and he will have the first down. And now a late marker comes down at the 22-yard line. Seventeen yards in the play. Aaron Evans caught it wide open, and it is against the Mountaineers. Ooh. Illegal receiver downfield, or ineligible, I should say. Has that loss of down? That's a loss of down. Yeah. Oh, that's a biggie there. I see. I don't think they thought Major was going to throw the ball. I thought that they figured he's going to run the ball. I mean, who throws the ball? in that situation. An eligible receiver, downfield offense, third down. No loss of down, the penalty will take it back just inside, it's gonna be the 12 yard line. Clock is running again. One minute, 12, now 111. Pass is drilled and incomplete looking for Rembert. Marcus Washington was covering. 55 seconds left. And a marker, another flag, down back at the 11-yard line. That's not loss of down, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going to wear out his hat. Well, the third down pass play, incomplete. Look out for a safety here. They're gonna, they, I, I wouldn't be surprised they take a safety. He's calling him over. He wants to talk to his kids. An eligible receiver now failed during the pass. Penalty declined. Fourth down. Boy, I tell you, the pit defense just came on the field, and they are going crazy. I, I can't. They're going to come after this, but look out. Greg Herzog. Gets it away, and it is a beauty. Hampton all the way back to the 40 on the fair catch. <laughs> 48 yards of the kick, and here's the story. 49 seconds left. West Virginia by three, 31 to 28. The Pitt Panthers with no timeouts.
Redman on a running play. He'll take it for only a couple of yards. Proctor comes up to make the stop. Really kind of a strange call. Huh? No, no, no harm done, I don't think, and a good try. A good try. Wide side of the field, line it up, throw it. Van Pelt, knocked down. Leroy Axum got a hand on it. It'll be third down. They need to get to the 24-yard line for a 41-yard kick. That's the long for Frazier. And they need either a first down or to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Pick up. Great effort by his guys tonight. This game was over. Van Pelt intended for Tooten and knocked away by Darren Fulton. It will be fourth down. Throw the ball too deep. They're going to give him the short underneath. He's floating this thing. Nose of the ball up, the ball's floating. Too many defenders back there. Seventeen seconds left. Two plays, the second one has to be out of bounds, the first one has to be a first down. And to make the first down, they need the 50-yard line. It is complete to Tootin the 33 yard line 25 yards in the pass play 11 seconds left in the ball game here's where that timeout kills them they can't throw it to the middle of the field they have to go out of bounds or throw it out of bounds seven ticks left on the clock as Ben Pelt gets it out of bounds And Van Horn is coming on to attempt a field goal with only seven seconds left. And this will be a 50-yard attempt. So now he leaves the lineup. Van Pelt comes back on the field as the field goal unit had come on. Quick out to Tootin. It is caught and out of bounds. Heard at the 25. Two seconds left. Oh, my goodness. Has this kid gained tonight? Has he learned win or lose? Win or lose, he's brought his team back. Well, he's come of age in this game. There's Daddy. Mr. Van Pell, how proud he must be. Now the field goal unit comes on the field. At this time, rather than Van Horn, it will be Ed Frazier. And this might be the most graphic example yet this year of kicking without a tee. He's had two blocks already. 42-yard attempt. As you might imagine, this crowd is absolutely stunned. A 42-yard field goal by Ed Frazier with two seconds showing on the clock. Frazier had two blocks. You have to give it to the kid. Off the turf. And with at least six inches to spare, 
He kicked it right through, no question about the direction. It was only a matter of whether it would get there, and after having two blocked, Ed Frazier maintained his concentration under the most difficult conditions, and the Pittsburgh team should be very, very proud of themselves. What a remarkable job by his team. He is a motivator. The Pitt people love their coach. They love their coach, and they should. They came through tonight. Excellent job by both teams with Pittsburgh. A remarkable comeback. 50 years from now, Ron, they'll talk about this one here. Maybe not very happily, but they'll talk about it. It was a career long by Frazier. What a job. Let's go down to Chris Fowler, down on the field. Chris. OK, Ron, with Mike Gottfried. Coach, it's a tie. Does it feel like a win down here, though? No, I don't think it feels like a win, but I think when you come from so far behind, you try to position yourself so you can come out here with something. We tried two two-point plays or three. We weren't successful, so we scratched that idea, kicked the extra point, tried to play them for the field goal late in the game. Talk about Alex Van Pelt, a tough first half down here in his home territory, pulled it together in the fourth quarter. Chris, he's 18 years old, he's 19, whatever he is, and to come down here and play like he did there at the end, I think it's a tribute to him. Anytime on the road you can have this kind of game, uh, you got to figure there's some good things ahead. But we'll take some. Uh, you know, I don't like a tie, but I, I like the idea of getting out of it and not getting beat. Okay, thanks, Coach. Ron? Chris, thanks so much. Once again, our final score 31 31, a tie between West Virginia and Pitt. Our Visa players of the game are from Pittsburgh, Henry Tooten, and from West Virginia, Major Harris. And as a part of their continuing development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team. And now for Kevin Kiley, Chris Fowler, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin. Let's go to Bob Carpenter for the College Football Scoreboard Show. Gentlemen. All right, Ron, thank you very much. And tonight, the backyard brawl is a draw in Morgantown, a 31-31 final. As the Panthers come from way back, maybe that fits in with Upset Saturday. Look like West Virginia had it made. Coming up, we have Lee Corso, Bino Cook down in Knoxville after Tennessee upset Auburn today. And a lot of scores and highlights for you. In fact, later on, SportsCenter will bring you the story of the Toronto Blue Jays and their quest to go to postseason play in Major League Baseball today. Let's talk about games, late games taking place in the top 